<laughs> Hello, guys. Anyone here? Uh, hey. Hi, Igor. <laughs> hey. Uh, Duncan here. Can you guys hear me? Uh, hi, Duncan. How are you doing? I'm uh, Sharif. Hi. Thank you very much for organizing this uh, webinar. Oh, I didn't organize it. I got invited. So I can't take the credit, but I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Duncan, for being there. And thank you, Ahmed Sharif, for organizing the meeting. And we have a special guest, of course. Igor is also here as well. So thank you, guys. Yes, well done. <laughs> Everybody's here. <clears throat> Ahmed, can you hear us? I think. Yes, I can hear you guys. Thank you very much for coming, all of you. I'm not sure it got muted itself. Okay, fantastic. That's that's very good. We have 46 participants until now, which is very good. Yeah, and it's a live uh, Facebook live as well. So there's thousands, dozens of people on my. Are we gonna wait for? For the time or someone of you will say I some think words. We should start on time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Duncan, whereabouts are you? Are you in the UK right now? No, I'm actually in Sofia right now, in a hotel oh. with terrible, terrible internet. So I'm having okay. to do it. But it's still lucky to have you here on this call, definitely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It was a pleasure to meet with Igor as well in uh, Bosnia. Yes, yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you liked the, liked the talk. Definitely, yes. Well, actually, I was talking about this two years ago, but I'm just a sapphire. <laughs> I'm better late than never. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs>
Thank you for calling me and thank you for coming everyone. I'm so excited to be here and specifically with such incredible people and most importantly, Igor Kronik. Uh, I was so delighted to and so, so inspired when I heard your conversation in the web in uh, our boot camp in, in Bosnia. And the information that you shared with us there opened our eyes, the business for that we are in and how the Dr. Rujo planned this business very well. And uh, today we're going to share with you what is cryptocurrency and why the cryptocurrency is there and the uh, positive and negative of uh, cryptocurrency and as well as uh, and, and the decentralized and centralized with uh, one of the respected Igor Kronik. He's been uh, uh, tremendously working very hard to answer thousands of people who have experience on cryptocurrency. And today he will share with you the reality of the cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency and why we need this. So, to, I mean, um, not to de delay my conversation, he's going to share about his experience, why he's here, and uh, uh, a bit about the, uh, his life, and as well as he's going to do a presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Igor, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay, hello to everyone. Hello, so I was, I was, I was can you called, hear me? I was called by the company. Uh, can anyone hear me? Yes, I can hear. So it's frozen. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, guys? Okay. Well, uh, as you all know, uh, probably by now, uh, what makes me credible or expert or something, I don't really like to label myself uh, such. Uh, the fact is that first time I heard about Bitcoin was 2010. <clears throat> I was playing with it. And I even mined it on a computer. I had a bunch of it, but I didn't uh, save them until now because uh, at the time I was uh, pretty much young and I believed in those stories that circulated, that it's scanned, that there is no future. So I, I played with it. I, later I mined uh, Litecoin and other coins and I made some polls because what I saw in the markets I didn't like because the uh, uh, market didn't uh, uh, fulfill a uh, white paper of the, of, the, of the Bitcoin. It became only traded assets and not the mean of payment and the store of value. So I, I was back in 2015 when I heard, uh, actually not, not 2016 when I heard about one coin and then I also started to follow all the news. Actually, every, everything about crypto market started at around 2016 because, because it, it exploded. So I was summoned to the GLG bootcamp by the company to come and speak about uh, the rest of the cryptocurrency market, uh, uh, what types, what makes value, et cetera, and what makes one coin different. Why, why I personally think that one coin is, is, is different and what uh, problems do, do they try to solve. So right now I will start the screen share with my, of my presentation and we can start. Uh, I'm not sure how it cut off. It just it just connected. Something, something happened. Yeah, uh, I need I need you to allow me to share my screen. Yes, definitely. Um, there you go. Here you go. Connect. Here you go. You are yes. ready. Yes. <laughs> Well, let's let's start from the beginning, shall we? Because we yeah. need to we need to we need one life people to actually know the industry they're in, not just uh, the company they're they're trying to promote. Uh, that was pretty much uh, a mistake from the beginning by early leaders. Uh, but okay, let let's try to forget about the past and try to uh, catch up with the whole all the market, so people can be actually credible when they're 
they need to talk uh, about it. All this idea, as you probably most of you know, it, it started at, uh, at the financial crisis at 2008. Uh, white paper emerged made by pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto. No one knows who, who that is. Uh, the idea was to make peer-to-peer uh, -peer electronic money in a need to circumvent uh, intermediary institutions because, first of all, every 10 years almost, we have a recession, some bubble pops, uh, inflation is, is a problem, fiat money is losing its purchase value over years, and banks uh, have a power to make, uh, to stop uh, do, uh, doing loans and killing the, the, the industry and killing the bubble. So. Let's make some money, some value that we can transact between each other without the need of intermediary institution. Uh, you might think that blockchain is some revolutionary technology, but actually it's, it isn't. It's innovation of uh, already existing technology. It was called uh, distributed ledger technology. It's more than 30 years old. People, people used to make uh, uh, linked databases actually chains uh, even earlier, but uh, this time it was put on internet, it, it was made public and immutable ledger, and they called it blockchain, because it's a chain of blocks, right? Uh, this first blockchain uh, uh, makes uh, blocks every, every 10 minutes. Uh, first application on the first blockchain is called Bitcoin. It was supposed to be a digital currency protected by cryptography that's actually the definition of cryptocurrency digital currency protected by cryptography for safe storing and it was uh, it was supposed to be a mean of payment be between people so it was supposed to be usable <clears throat> uh, inflation that, that is killing fiat currencies is solved with cryptocurrency by finite uh, uh, circulation but some finite circulation uh, actually on the other side brings deflation but some, some of the cryptocurrencies, uh, uh, some of the newest cryptocurrencies are actually trying to solve this. First one that is public is actually Ripple. And second one that is not public yet, it's one coin, of course. When company owns more coins and can leverage and make a buffer when needed to intervene for the uh, stability of the price. Uh, first block was mined in 2009, and then it started. An uh, algorithm that is used to power this first blockchain is called proof of work where participants in the network uh, dedicate their CPU power and electricity to solve uh, equations. Uh, they are, but by doing that, they are confirming transactions are valid because every node uh, holds a whole blockchain, mining node, full node, not validation node, holds the whole blockchain and they already know which address has how many coins so they, they can easily validate transactions. Uh, it was supposed to be faster and more cheap way to, to transact at the beginning you know, on the paper. Uh, in 2010, uh, someone decided to make an exchange. So actually we can see an actual value of this Bitcoin because uh, it, it started to buzz all around. Uh, it was some Japanese guy who made a company. He had this domain empty gox which was actually short from magic the gathering online exchange game so he used that domain to start the exchange but with lack of profit professionalism that exchange was hacked it ate uh, hundred thousand uh, <clears throat> eight hundred and fifty thousand bitcoin was stolen it was worth for uh, 450 millions back then but today it's more than seven billion even today, there's a trustee of, the, of this Mount Gox exchange. They, they just filed for bankruptcy. So they are slowly uh, selling off those, those Bitcoins, some of them on, the, on exchange and, and some of them be, below the exchange because uh, uh, they don't want to influence the price too much. Uh, after that, maybe you know that uh, Bitcoin reached uh, uh, 100 and to $1,200 price and after the, this collapse and also China clamped down and many sell-offs happened and, and we in red went back to 2000, uh, 200 and after that it started to group up uh, better, more professional exchanges uh, emerged 
uh, more people are, are, bring, uh, are brought in, more news, more adoption, but uh, nothing about usability. Actually, it's all about trading. It, it, even regulators are deeming it as a commodity rather than a currency. At least we have a rule that it is not security. Uh, as for usability, all that is left from that time is a mocking of the guy who paid uh, two pizzas with 10,000 bitcoins. It's celebrated every year as a Bitcoin pizza day, but actually that guy was a hero. He used his bitcoins to buy a goods. Uh, it, it was supposed to be that way. But so, where are we today? As we, all, we can all see, whoever is following the market, uh, mostly traders are interested in, uh, in trading bitcoins because uh, actually the same science applies, the same knowledge applies, but it's unregulated. So uh, you can do whatever you want. You can manipulate, you can speculate, you can do illegal stuff that you cannot do on stock market and you can earn money. In order to earn money, someone needs to lose money. So uh, everyone who buys Bitcoin today, uh, he buys it for one purpose, not to spend it on some merchant. Uh, it, uh, they buy it to wait for it to go to the moon and then profit. But that's uh, something like Ponzi scheme, actually. I mean, you, you need to wait for new investors to come so you can actually be, be paid off. Not really a Ponzi, but it looks like a Ponzi. A price of Bitcoin was rehashed into Ponzi scheme, not Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin itself is a beautiful technology that world might actually need. Uh, in 2013, uh, was actually first ICO that happened, but in 2015, a significant ICO that actually made it happen, it was Ethereum. It was labeled as a blockchain version two because they added smart contracts and native tokens and it was a platform for decentralized application, something like a, like a world computer. It was a very good idea. It was uh, accepted very well. It also uses uh, proof of stake, uh, sorry, proof of work uh, algorithm, which actually proved very, very slow, just like a Bitcoin, because they have as, as many transactions as possible as they can do. It's 17 for Ethereum and maybe around four for Bitcoin. It proved to be a bottleneck because uh, as applications on the blockchain grew, they became very slow, transaction fees became very high, so it became impossible to work. But uh, Ethereum brought something, uh, uh, Ethereum found its use case and it's actually uh, for ICOs, uh, people realize that it's very easy to raise funds for their startup pro pro uh, project. They just make a flashy website and very well written white paper and they raise millions and most of them don't even uh, deliver what, what they promised. And no one can sue them because it's unregulated, right? Um, uh, many of those ICOs are actually good projects and they are promised as blockchain version three or even version four, but we are yet to see them happen. That it's all talk right now. Uh, so we need a better technology because Bitcoin and Ethereum are slow for processing. Actually, both Bitcoin and Ethereum do have their solution in coming. Uh, people actually believe that it will work. Bitcoin has Lightning Network. It's a layer two solution. Uh, there is actually, uh, let's say, decentralized network of uh, liquidity nodes that... Uh, that, that, that act like uh, routers on the internet, that uh, people uh, are not transacting on the blockchain anymore. They are only opening and closing payment channels on the blockchain and all the transactions are actually stored off, off the blockchain. So why do you need the blockchain then? It's, that's my question. But if people want to use it, they will use it. That, that's credible. Also, Ethereum has, uh, has their improvements there coming with Casper protocol, that is proof of stake. They are coming with Plasma, with also off-chain solution. But we'll see uh, how that will go because Ethereum has a problem. That they already have uh, a lot of value on the blockchain, a lot of dApps, and they cannot just do whatever they want. 
they need to work carefully where all those ICOs that are advertising as Ethereum killer, uh, they can do whatever they want because they are not public yet, right? So most of them, if not all, uh, are going to use a proof of stake uh, consensus algorithm uh, and its variants. One of the better ones is delegated proof of stake that EOS uses. Uh, because the proof of work proved not to be that efficient and slow and uh, consumes too much an electricity. But when you look at it, cryptocurrencies don't have any intrinsic, intrinsic value. But when you have a cryptocurrency that uh, that is a validated transaction with proof of work, you actually have some value outside the network and it's electricity and hardware that you get. get. So it's kind of a better better security, uh, but it's slow. It's slow and it's impossible to, to scale on decentralized matter, not to mention this, uh, the governance because uh, developers need to make a consensus in order to make improvements. And if they do not agree, they take apart and then we have a fork and that's not good for mainstream adoption. As a proof of stake, it's actually a way that you, you, can, you, you can have a node uh, at a single, VPS virtual machine and you can install their software and, and stake some of the tokens or coins that you bought in the ICO or later on the exchange and uh, those stakes are your guarantee that you will not uh, participate in bad transactions if you do you can get voted to uh, get, be kicked out and your tokens will be lost you know so it's kind of a security that, that you are trying to be uh, in the favor of the network. Up until now, we have uh, crystallized three types of cryptocurrencies. The first one, were, which is actually a Bitcoin, it was a currency cryptocurrency. Uh, they, are, they serve uh, being store of value, means of a change or unit of account. So they are, they are meant to be a payment vehicle for, used for paying goods and services and sending value, transacting value between people. It's Bitcoin, Monero, Zcash, Litecoin, Verge, and many others. Uh, one coin is actually trying to become such current currency, cryptocurrency, because its main use is usability be between people and businesses to pay for goods and services. Uh, we have utility cryptocurrencies, such as Ethereum. Those are tokens. Uh, that, uh, do, that do not serve as a payment for payment method, but to be used on the platform, on their native platform for gas, for something, for participating in the network or using the network. We have many, many uh, utility cryptocurrencies today, but uh, a few of them are actually alive and ready to work. NEO is like Chinese uh, Ethereum. We have uh, EOS launched uh, like a week ago. Uh, uh, let's not uh, mention more projects, they're not important. And the third uh, type is uh, app platform cryptocurrencies. When you do an ICO on Ethereum, let's say, you make your contract, you make your token, and you raise funds, you deliver those tokens to people, and this is your native cryptocurrency that is hosted on Ethereum. How will how people use it later? Maybe to buy some stuff on their apps, maybe to use on the platforms. But actually, ninety nine percent of app coins are just scams. They took money and delivered nothing. But there are good ones also. Now let's see what makes the value of cryptocurrencies. First of all, it's a demand because it's, there's no demand. There. Uh, there's no value, but demand is made by people. Uh, then you need to have a concept, a purpose. Why, do you, why did you create uh, your coin? There are many coins, but they are not, the, their concept is, is actually leading nowhere. I, I, I personally read many white papers where I don't realize what, what are they trying to do. I mean, people are trying to push blockchain and tokens into their apps where they don't belong even. So you need to have a valid concept. Let's just say, let's just say about one coin concept, for example, what is it? I mean, it's a 
a merchant coin. It's something that Bitcoin was supposed to be. Uh, so number one is uh, usability. We already see that on Deal Shaker. Uh, usage is as, as a third part. If, if a coin isn't used, then it, it, it really has no real value outside of the trading platforms. Uh, one coin made uh, this deal shaker and since they are making uh, their own ecosystem uh, apart from the, the other, uh, let's call it coin market cap, <coughs> they actually have a power to make deal shaker participate in the value creation. So if you have bitcoins and you send them, uh, spend them at restaurant, uh, you didn't do anything good for the price creation. Uh, maybe even you sold bitcoins if you use some card given by some provider that actually you, you are selling your bitcoins so you can pay cash to the merchant. But when you buy coupons on DealShaker, you're actually participating in a, in a positive way in, in value creation. Uh, yes, one coin uh, lacks uh, a secondary property of currency and that is to be exchangeable for other currencies, but they, they will have it when they go public. Right now, they already had good disability and it's very, very uh, valuable for making a value of cryptocurrency. Also infrastructure. We see all those cryptocurrencies struggle with scalability and uh, <laughs> every solution that I'm seeing right now is that you need off-chain solution, some off-chain network uh, that will actually make most to work and save only some of the transactions or part of the transactions on on chain. One coin also has pretty good infrastructure. They have the wallet, they have this deal shaker, which is usability platforms. Who knows what, what is coming yet? I mean, they are evolving with the market. There's no clear roadmap because all this market is crazy. It's, uh, it's evolving so fast, new technologies are coming in. Uh, also a cryptocurrency needs a community I follow many, many uh, protocol projects uh, and all of them have most, most, mostly uh, uh, telegram groups where community actually is asking questions here and giving answers, uh, admins help. And the largest number that I've seen is uh, just a shade below 100,000. Uh, but it's mostly 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 uh, users in the community. All, those, all this community is actually praising their loved, beloved uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, they are uh, asking questions on the groups and communities giving answers to them. Why do I say this? Because we didn't actually see this very much. Uh, OneCoin has a <laughs> pretty great community. It's almost three and a half million members. But... Where do you see community doing community work like in other decentralized cryptocurrencies? You don't. Uh, almost everyone is uh, expecting company to uh, write all the answers, to, to give all the information, but that's impossible. No cryptocurrency, no project can write everything on white paper. There needs to be a community that uh, someone always knows answers, and also uh, some people are tied to the company, like company trust, one coin company trusts me and I can get some information. And I made this one, one coin debate forum just to help the community to spread the information because you cannot expect the company to do it directly to everyone. So more people need to do community work. So if you have information and you see somewhere, uh, someone is asking, question you need to help them answer because better answer or let them uh, uh, learn some wrong wrong information and spread it and we've seen so many problems uh, because of that maybe it's even good that glg makes this one telegram one coin telegram group uh, make some admins and let people come there and ask questions and everything that that will be very helpful because it's the community uh, uh, cryptocurrency is not about one person. That's why you don't ask where is Ruja. Her vision is uh, clear. Her, uh, her concept is very clear, but she's not needed for that to succeed because th th that's really not about this company. 
And it's a problem that in MLM, it's all about one person cult. You know, every MLM company has its leader. Uh, one coin is trying to make a cryptocurrency. It's all about the users because we are the one that will help succeed or fail. If we all sit down and wait for the exchange to sell the coins, we will not help this concept to work. But if we find merchants and use our coins and let the merchants sell, we will roll the, the wheel and actually help it succeed. And the last point that, uh, that, that actually is participating in value of cryptocurrency is active admin team. Because without admin or developers, there's no success. Uh, we've seen that one coin did survive some pretty major problems. Let's say police and investigators coming to the office, scaring the hell of everyone. And the key people remained. Uh, those who left uh, were re replaced by stronger, better. So I'd say they have pretty good active team. Let's talk about advantages of cryptocurrency. Well, those are actually I believed advantages, but we'll see if, if that is actually the case, practically, at decentralized uh, systems, of course. First of all, it is believed that there is no fraud that uh, cryptocurrency cannot be counterfeit or reversed by sender because when if you are a merchant and you get you get paid by a credit card uh, your buyer can fraud you because he can ask for chargeback and that then, then you are defrauded because his bank will return his money and you already sent your service services are more uh, in danger of chargeback than goods because if you sold the good, you have a delivery, you know, information, and you can prove that you actually deliver it. Uh, but in cryptocurrency, that cannot happen because when someone someone sends you coins, you cannot ask it back. Back. But what if seller defrauds the buyer? Then buyer is helpless totally. There are solutions even written in the Bitcoin white paper in the terms of some escrows, but we don't see that yet. Uh, uh, in cryptocurrencies, identity cannot be stolen because uh, unlike the credit cards where they use pool basis, you know, a merchant pulls the money from your card, from your account. In cryptocurrencies, money is pushed. So you need to actually participate in, in the, let's say someone stole your credit card and he can actually use it everywhere because it's always, uh, it's always pooling the, the money. But with cryptocurrency, you need to be the one with your private key to push the money toward the merchant. But if someone steals your private key or you get hacked or something, then there is no one to help you even then. Uh, actually, it's a, a immediate settlement also because we, uh, but, but we, don't, we don't see a practical use of this because with smart contract, you can, you can, uh, smart contracts can be designed and enforced to eliminate the third party uh, approvals for transactions. Uh, let's say for transfer of uh, property, you need to pay some uh, third party to validate your contract with smart contracts. The, they are circumvented and those transactions are faster and cheaper. We are yet to see this in practice, but yes, it's possible in, in the future, I think that many such businesses and transactions will be done on the blockchain. Uh, also, cryptocurrencies bring access to everyone. Many of you probably all have a bank account and you know what, 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 what papers you needed to fill, what document you needed to give in order to open a bank account. With cryptocurrency, uh, actually uh, up until now, it was very easy, just like download, download your wallet or if it's exchange, just make an account and everything is fine, you can send money. But this is starting to be much more strict with these regulations and KYC is needed. But then again, all you need is internet and it, it's very easy to borderless send money, unlike the fiat money with, with banks. Uh, transactions and fee times are supposed to be uh, smaller uh, in terms of fees and transaction times but uh, we don't see this with Bitcoin and Ethereum right now because they're struggling with, uh, with scalability. Uh, 
they, they will probably fix it in the future. I'm a strong believer of that. Uh, we see one coin doesn't have any problems of those because the transactions are instant. When you send money to someone, uh, he immediately receives it. Or when you buy a coupon and redeem it, you almost immediately get money. And uh, there's a double-edged benefit, in my opinion, that uh, you, you own your own money because uh, a bank can free freeze your account whenever they want, or not actually want, but uh, maybe government doesn't like you and they order the bank to close your account, so blah, blah, blah. Uh, people don't like that in cryptocurrencies, supposedly. No one can freeze your account up until now, uh, but this benefits uh, bad doers, you know, this benefits only bad people who actually are fraud, scammers, thieves, and no one, no, no one can uh, uh, actually punish them. Uh, so one coin can do it. Uh, one coin can save even end buyers and sellers. Uh, uh, but uh, we have seen, I don't know if you're following, but EOS launched uh, recently. And EOS is a network that uh, is validated by 21 block producer. Those producers were voted by users and they have actually a power to freeze accounts too. And they, in fact, a few days ago, they froze seven accounts of alleged uh, scammers who fished uh, and stole tokens from people. So guess, uh, I guess uh, this argument that one coin is not a cryptocurrency because it can freeze accounts is off the table because EOS also did it. And it's a good thing because no one is will touch your your coins and your property if you are following the uh, the, the compliance, the rules, the law. If you are a thief, uh, you need to be punished. So only only bad people are punished, and it's a good thing. And it's good that we are actually seeing this also in open source decentralized systems. Disadvantages of cryptocurrency is definitely lack of security because it's right now it's suitable mostly for high tech and IT educated people who actually know how to handle private keys, how to handle uh, gold wallets, how not to send coins to wrong address, how not to lose their passwords, because if they do that, nothing, no one can help them. Their coins are lost at one coin. They have this power. They they are they, they are not doing it uh, as they like. Just when there is just a legal case where they need to, but then again, they are yet to be public companies. So we 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 will see what happens if they become, and they will, I'm sure, a shareholding public company. <laughs> they will not be legally allowed to just freeze anyone's account there, there there will need to be some legal document from the court to do that and but it's a good thing that they can do it <clears throat> uh, because cryptocurrencies today uh, have uh, the only usage mostly they they're used in, in black markets for tax evasion for money laundering it's much more easier easier than, than cash uh, we, we are seeing increased regulations and law enforcement agencies could decide to anonymously center the cryptocurrency post to high risk for money laundering and they can they can strengthen a regulation that would diminish the currency value. We are already seeing that uh, uh, going on. Uh, as for one coin, there are central governance, the uh, govern authority knows where, where they are. They are fully KYC AML compliant from the start. So I hope when they go public, uh, they will manage to, to speed up these KYC procedures because I think after that, uh, you will not be able to use coins if you are not KYC uh, approved. I think right now it's even possible for some accounts because it's not public yet. Uh, limited scaling is also uh, one of the big disadvantages of, of uh, decentralized open source anonymous cryptocurrencies because uh, you know if you have a central governance and you have a lack of computing power you just know where and how many how much cpu power to put 
and decentralization doesn't doesn't bring this. In fact, uh, it it only gets more centralized. Like Bitcoin, for example, they, it was so decentralized earlier, several years ago. But today, we have almost eighty percent of uh, uh, hashing power of Bitcoin network owned by six, I believe it's six uh, companies. We have three entities who own more than fifty percent of of uh, tokens of, of coins. They can they can actually agree to make a fifty one percent attack and make fraudulent transactions, and the rest of network will of course see it. But all they can do is uh, agree or fork. That's not a good for 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 future because if they fork, then they leave even more caching power to all those fraudulent uh, doers. But it, it didn't happen yet. But people believe that that's, ne that's never going to happen. So when we hear that one coin demands too much belief, it's not so much different with all those other cryptocurrencies because we all believe in, in the good consensus and code that, that developers make. We all believe that those majority of miners will not uh, participate in fraudulent transactions. Uh, let me tell you about Bitcoin code. Uh, uh, there is a GitHub uh, website that is actually a Git repository where actually companies and all cryptocurrencies hold the, the code. GitHub is a central company and some person has a password and probably uh, two-factor authentication for this account where we have a main Bitcoin repository. It's a main Bitcoin code. So if I'm a developer in Bitcoin, I want to contribute. Uh, I, I need to fork this, this uh, repository, main repository and make my own repository, make my adjustments, test it, and demand a pull request. But the admin and owner of this main repository must accept it. So it, the code is pretty centralized. You know, it's not true that anyone can do anything. Uh, is it a bad or good? Of course, it's a good thing. But uh, it's, it, <laughs> we see that central governance is needed for something to live because anarchy cannot work in, in the real world. Really. Um, so also, we have a lack of applications today. Uh, we see that Bitcoin is very popular for illegal transactions. Uh, it was kind of useful when it was less volatile with real merchants, but we have seen Steam dropping. Steam is a platform for gaming, one of maybe even largest in the world. They dropped a sect in Bitcoin. We've seen last year, uh, largest conference, Bitcoin conference, stopped accepting Bitcoin because of the high fees. We've seen even uh, mocking. We've seen an ad a picture with a guy who wants to pay for a coffee, he asked for a receipt and the waiter told him it's $5 for a coffee and $50 for a fee. Uh, why was that? Because uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the la in the end of the last year, we really, we really had bumped. Uh, so many people uh, were using Bitcoin, so many people were pouring, but network just couldn't handle it. And this usage actually dropped sentiment drops if you, if you go to uh, to Google Trends and, and type buy Bitcoin you'll see a to total drop even below the, the last year for the for this year so uh, also what kills usability is that people are just buying this Ponzi hype that Bitcoin will be 100,000 or million or whatever they're just buying it and, and waiting it to go up they don't want to use it and it really kills usability. So lack of application is really one of the disadvantages right now. Uh, we see all these platforms that are actually trying to make some applications, but then again, without central governance, you cannot grow. There is, a, there is one project that I actually like. It's, a, it's called Steamit. It's a social network where you can write uh, articles and people can reward you with money. And it's totally run on the blockchain. Uh, blockchain was made actually by the same uh, founder who made the uh, big shares and EOS, Dan Larimer. Uh, it, it works really good, but uh, where's the marketing? Where's the central, who will pay for the marketing? If it's decentralized, no one wants to 
give up their share of money to pay something. So actually, community needs to do it, and community is really bad for that. They are used that to, to that central uh, body is doing that. Now let's 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 go to ICOs. Uh, we, we've said we've seen that Ethereum actually brought those ICOs. There, it pumped it very very high. Uh, they are very they became very popular uh, for fundraising and startups uh, because there's no regulations uh, for ICOs, so it was so easy to collect money from uncredited and uneducated small investors. Because if you're doing IPO. You really need to prove your your company, your financial stability. There, there is so harsh regulation, and and, and again, uh, not everyone could participate in the IPO because they would need the broker or something. At ICOs, you could just, as I said, make a website, do some advertising, take millions, and you can actually go away. And many of those, many of them actually went away. So China even banned ICOs totally. Uh, USA is the best with, with, with regulation there. The Security Exchange Commission, SEC, that actually is just starting to, to be a watchdog. To, they actually said there are no utility tokens, the cryptocurrency ICOs actually invented. Do all our security. So you see every ICO running they ask you to agree that you are not usa citizen and that you are not from china because china banned icos and usa deemed that securities and no one wants to go to this to, 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 through this hassle with sec uh, you can see them saying so those one coin opposition saying why isn't like one coin in, in the usa and no ico isn't in USA just because of SEC. So one coin is giving free tokens with education, but they don't, they, they maybe tried, but they, they thought it's easier to circumvent uh, the current state. When they go public, uh, they will also need for exchange, not for deal shaker, for exchange, they will need uh, this uh, FinCEN. Uh, it's a financial, Financial Crime Enforcement Agency, yeah, FinCEN. Uh, uh, you need to get a, a license. It's something like Buffin in Germany for, ma for money transmittance, even for digital currencies. Uh, so they can actually obtain this currency and, and, and sell one coins in exchange. But DealShaker is nothing but uh, a website that uh, links buyers and sellers and you are buying or selling. And if you are buying and selling, you don't need to have any license. Even in New York, if you want to work with digital currencies, uh, if you want to transact and uh, uh, transmit them, you need a bit license. Uh, that's how it goes. Uh, you don't need that for buying and selling, just for exchange. Right? Uh, also in ICOs, it is very easy to, mi to mi misrepresent your project without any responsibility, because really it's not regulated. You can write whatever you want. You can. You can deliver half of it, you can deliver nothing, but mostly they at least do something, but that has nothing to do with their roadmap. Uh, I even participated in 2016 in some ICOs that, that led just nowhere. Uh, they dumped their tokens from the pre-sale uh, price. Uh, price. They, they never ask for a good exchange. They all, all go to bad exchange and people just lose money like that. But it's good for them because people are, people are spending uh, uh, as much as they can afford to lose, right? So <laughs> ICO holders benefit. Uh, ICO also can be used to launder money from illegal activities. For example, you have millions from selling drugs. There's no problem buying Bitcoin with those millions. Or maybe Tether, Tether USDT, you can buy it from their company and then you can buy Bitcoin with them or Ethereum, and you can invest in ICO. You can sell those tokens when they go on exchange and you lost your money. Then after that, you can actually tax it if you want. Uh, so regulators are pretty concerned because many companies are switching from IPO to ICO, where, where in IPO they can uh, regulate them, they can watch them, but in, in ICO, there's, there's no control. So we are seeing this 2018 as a year 
of coming regulations for the ICOs. Here in this graph, we, we can see that 2017 uh, had almost $2.6 billion raised, but it's, uh, it's uh, only count, uh, calculated on the current value of the Bitcoin at that time. Here we can see that in 2018, uh, already in quarter one, ICOs raised more than the whole last year. So it's, it's really crazy. What we do know about ICO regulation guidelines that are coming is that company that doing ICO will need to prove its financial stability, just like in IPO. They will need a clear, clear structure for legal uh, uh, arrangement between the entity and platform service provider. Uh, this is actually good because many websites directly took money and it's really, really hard to uh, regulate them. So now we see more uh, licensed platforms that are actually conducting ICOs, are, are doing ICOs for a company. So this is good. Uh, companies will need to provide transparency on how the process of token sale will be treated from an account perspective, because uh, uh, up until now, uh, many ICOs uh, raised, who know how, how uh, they, they send, they, they left so many tokens for the team, for marketing, etc. but people never knew how much, uh, for, how, how, for what purpose will be, it be used. But from this year, definitely, it's, uh, people are actually more educated about ICOs. It's not even easy to conduct ICO this year <laughs> like, like you did uh, last year, because now we have many, many experts who know how to write a white paper, who know how to conduct pre-sale or public sale and then cloud sale. And more and more ICOs are raising majority of fund of their hard cap uh, in private and public sale where they fund several venture capitals, sell them most uh, because they, it's easy to regulate and just leave like 10% or something to public crowd sale. And even that, uh, even for that, for, for those uh, small amount of people, they uh, ask for KYC because more and more newer ICOs are, have a white list procedure when you need to uh, upload your KYC document, uh, documents and be approved in order to participate in the ICO. So we see ICO space getting pretty regulated and more uh, less and less scams are happening, of course. Uh, less scams are happening and more money is being raised, which is a good thing for cryptocurrency, of course. Now we can speak about, it's actually the end, about crypto market dark side. Uh, I truly believe that this will vanish as regulators come in into the market and the market will, will flourish. But right now we need to, uh, we need to understand what's going on and uh, invest in cryptocurrencies accordingly. And uh, this is also one of the main reasons why I like one coin concept because they are actually outside of this, of this story. Of course, people will say, yes, they can, they, can, uh, they can do their own manipulation and whatever. Uh, but at the end, we know who they are, where they are, and when they go public, they will probably be a public company. So it's not, they will be regulated. They will have exchange, it's pending for a uh, license for the exchange. So it's not just, it's not really the same. Uh, although some, some people don't believe it. Uh, we see speculation manipulation. There are mainly uh, factors to determine the coin value. Uh, we can see uh, we could see actually uh, that every FUD news, FUD is a fear, doubt, fear, uncertainty, a doubt. Uh, when someone says, says some, something negative about cryptocurrencies, people scare away, people sell off. And those who probably may ask or orchestrated those news actually are buying on, on the lower price. We can see, I hope many of you are following the crypto market. We can see prices, prices plunging. Uh, actually, it was all back before the bubble. Uh, what, what happened is well, many, many, many reasons. But uh, I, I've seen many good, good people and good experts actually think that uh, this decline is because the regulators are starting to watch exchanges for manipulation, because in stock market they cannot manipulate. 
uh, and they actually stop manipulating so without fake volume and we'll see later that exchanges do have fake volume uh, without fake volume you cannot uh, inflate prices and they just go down with the, to their real values it's a huge problem for bitcoin because global average price for producing one bitcoin is something above eight thousand it's it's way below that so i don't know how those mlm and cloud mining farms exist but okay they are they are probably in countries where it's not that that expensive there are countries where you where one bitcoin costs you like two thousand dollars uh exchanges act really really like cartels because everything is about bitcoin if, if you need to buy any any other cryptocurrency you need to buy it through the bitcoin maybe that also helps and maintain the price what if what if exchanges made the liquidity to, to fiat currency for every separate altcoin maybe then bitcoin wouldn't be purchased so much uh, that's that's all fine but uh, it's not so good for currency property of the bitcoin which was supposed to be it's very volatile so all, no big merchants will accept it as a currency if it's, if it's uh, not stable and it cannot be stable because it's only made on the on the unregulated exchanges hopefully one day we'll, we'll see regulated exchanges but always since it's uh, the cryptocurrency the blockchain itself as a technology is so borderless you, we will always have uh, these heavens when you can let's say let's say malta is is, is going to be a heaven for unregulated cryptocurrencies uh, exchanges binance is moving over there one of the one of the biggest uh, We'll see uh, later on later slides something about uh, fake volume on exchanges. Uh, CoinMarketCap.com is also purposely showing faulty information for many projects. I don't I don't know what are the reasons they do know it. Maybe you didn't pay. Maybe they don't like you. Maybe you're a competition for something that who they like, and everyone is looking for the CoinMarketCap for the credible cryptocurrency, and it's just a private website that that is doing some stats, you know, there are tens of such websites. But I think that uh, CoinMarketCap is actually oof, used for averaging prices between exchanges because uh, last year uh, CoinMarketCap decided to drop the, the volume from Korean exchanges for because of the Ripple, uh, because uh, more than 30% of the Ripple volume was uh, made in Korea with fiat currencies. And uh, let's say if Ripple was, I remember it was like $3 in, in this part of the world and in Korea it was almost $4, but people didn't know that. On CoinMarketCap it was like 3 and 3.3, let's say. And when they cut the, the Korea from the exchanges, so this $3.8 price didn't go into the math, all, all, all of a sudden uh, CoinMarketCap price of the Ripple came down to the normal price on the Western exchanges. People didn't know that. They just sold, sold off because they, because they thought that that was some fad or something and price plummeted even, even more. So CoinMarketCap is a huge, huge player and they and then we need to trust them because they are centralized that they will not uh, purposely, they can, uh, they can actually uh, uh, not show your uh, your circuit to supply to kill your rank or not not showing not show a real number uh, when you apply to list on the coin market cap they can they can first in, inside trade your coins and then list it with some kill kill price because they earn money we had many we uh, i wrote i i wrote an article on my forum about this uh, some some guys really really tried hard to make it uh, of course, crypto market, uh, cryptocurrency is much easier to use for money laundering than cash. That will hopefully be prevented with regulations. And all this hype about moon prices, as I, as I already said, uh, uh, are not help, helping because everyone wants to hodl. It's a slang for hold to your day life. Uh, don't, they don't want to spend uh, cryptocurrencies and they are just killing the uh, usability. We don't know if that will change ever. With this hype, it, it will not. And then there's a recent uh, happening with Tetra. 
Tender, uh, it was uh, they, they were uh, they were uh, accused for manipulating and inflating prices. Uh, there is some study made by uh, Texas University professor, and they made some algorithms to to check the blockchain of the tether and to see where they're going. They found basically that whenever prices went down, uh, new tethers were, were made and was sent to various exchanges to buy Bitcoin and altcoins, more altcoins than Bitcoin. Uh, and, and that way they actually, uh, they actually uh, allegedly manipulated prices. But uh, then after that article, uh, Tether as a company uh, made the audit report finally, because uh, what is Tether actually? Maybe you don't know. Uh, it's a company that made a stable coin that is pegged to the US dollar. So one US dollar is one USDT, so Tether token. And uh, most of the altcoin exchanges like Bittrex, KuCoin, uh, Binance, uh, etc., they accept Tether. Uh, why was it good for cryptocurrencies? First of all, banks are clamping down on cryptocurrencies. And banks are more and more closing accounts for the exchanges, for people who are actually spending money for to buy cryptocurrency. Uh, they, they, they lessen the limits. So you can, for example, uh, I remember in Coinbase last year, you could spend only about $2,000 a week to buy Bitcoin. Uh, what about the people who want to spend millions to buy Bitcoin? They cannot do it to the banks. It's, it's, it's so hard. Maybe some exchanges did, did, did find some deals. I think Bittrex uh, made a deal with bank and you, you, if you are properly verified, you can, you can buy up to 10 million, up to 10 million. But what if you want 100 million? Well, you can go to the Tether, make a deal with them, buy USDT for, those, for that money. They will just print you as many USDT, as many dollars you gave. And uh, you can use your Tether to buy uh, Bitcoin on all exchanges. Of course, for 150 million, price will go significantly up. Uh, but what about those tethers and those, their value? Their value was supposed to be backed by dollar. So if you have 2.6, something like that right now, tether in circulation, that means that they do have $2.6 billion on, the, on their banks. But up until now, they never, uh, they never proved it. So people believed in it and didn't care because <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, you can actually use it. You can actually also use it if you expect fall of the Bitcoin, you just sell it for USDT on the Binance, for example. And when Bitcoin price in dollars drops, you just buy more Bitcoin from your tether. So it's, it's very good and useful for, for crypto market. But then we see uh, tether issuing. Uh, uh, I will show you this, actually. Uh, let me just share, share my viewer, my home. No, no, not this. Yeah, this is the, the audit report made by, by uh, uh, well, it's kind of a credible Washington-based uh, law firm, uh, Free, Sporkin, and Sullivan. Uh, they were, they, they were, they are retired. I'm not sure if all three, but uh, the Sullivan guy was a re retired uh, federal judge. They made this, uh, this. Uh, I'll just touch on this later. Why am I showing this? Uh, this document is accepted by whole cryptocurrency community as a proof that Tether has $2.6 million in the bank. It's the first time that they showed it. But look at, the, look at this. They're showing that on bank one, they have this much. On bank two, they have this much. Total to this much. And the conclusion, S FCC is confident, FSS is confident that Tether's <clears throat> asset exchange, uh, the balance is fully backed USD Tether's in circulation as of June 1. So we have a law, a, a law firm that did not dis disclose what bank, did not show a proof of those money, they just wrote it and all the community accepted. Why am I showing this? It's, it's okay. I accept this. I, I don't think Tether is a fraud. Maybe it is, but I don't think personally. 
but uh, <laughs> we can we can actually uh, resemble this to uh, to this blockchain audit of one coin uh, well not those 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 last because it's really not credible company but the uh, first three audits were made by Semper Fortis. it was really 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 a credible audit company they made similar audits where you don't really See, they just say yes. Everything was blockchain. It's it's everything is consistent. Uh, hash, hash, blah blah blah, and it's all fine for some people. But many people, critics of OneCoin, don't don't accept that audit because it's it's so uh, it's so uh, common. You know? So so with this one, you just see you 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 don't see anything anything. Uh, uh, but why do I think this is enough for me personally? Because uh, Tether found a bank or two banks who actually want to do this for them. Why do they want to do this? Well, it's probably pretty lucrative. Who knows what fees are agreed on? And uh, if other banks knew that those banks are doing it, there would be a mess. They would probably stop doing this. We can see the similar problems with one coin and banks people who really believe it's a scam even after four years and so many investigations they as 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 soon as they hear about the bank they call it and they say this and that and one coin is unfortunately not self-evident yet and banks close account so it's better for some things to remain undisclosed and you can see the one coin company with all this criminal organizations behind them and the really good and honest critics who really uh, have healthy crit criticism because some things can be disclosed. I am working with that with the company, but some things just are better to not, not to remain uh, disclosed. Well, let me go back to the slides. So let's go back to the fake volume of the exchange. Here, uh, there is a whole report made by very, very good known and credible trader who, who, who spent quite some time uh, investigating uh, uh, volumes on se se several exchanges. And he, he detected a slippage in, in many of them, not all, but many. Slippage is a difference between uh, announced volume and actual volume so we can see okx here is on the red dots bitfinex is on cn dots green is kraken blue is gdex uh, horizontal line is a volume so more, more volume is on the right and the uh, vertical line is a slippage percentage so more difference for, mo for most exchanges a larger difference is made on smaller volumes, but we can see on OKX, which is, uh, I believe, the largest Chinese exchange, uh, it's huge. So on on huge volumes, they have they have huge slippage. Here we can see a screenshot of uh, some Litecoin BTC pair. Doesn't matter. Those. Sinusoid uh, perfect uh, volumes are not normal. Let's see Poloniex, which is a good exchange with almost no fake volume. The same, you can see it's not that, that good. Here they made some uh, some pairs, and just to make it short, it's eight eight hundred and eighty eight thousand or millions, I'm not sure what, what, the, what this number is. They have 90%, 92% fake volume. It's so substantial. Why no one is talking about it? I don't know, maybe they like that you can actually, or you can actually uh, earn money because volatility is needed in order for money to be earned by the people who know how to do it. Here we can see also Huobi, they made some uh, um, collect data from some pairs, and we can see that 81% is fake. What, what does fake mean? It's different because they announced one volume, but uh, the actual volume was different. 
Uh, also, we can see here uh, Binance and hit BTC because they have no, no fiat uh, gateways. Uh, we can see also that there is some slippage and the blue dots were actually a reference from, from uh, before. We can see that hit BTC has fairly low fake volume, but, but then again, it, it's also lower in volume, but only 34% was fake in Binance had pretty good volume, but 70% fake. Uh, why did I talk about this? Mm, I don't see it necessary as, uh, we'll see how it goes when the regu regulations come. So without manipulation, it will be different for sure. Maybe they, we're already seeing it with, with, with prices going down. Uh, many people think so, and I pretty much agree with them. Um, uh, this is the reason, one of the reasons why I think it's good that one coin will not be a part of those exchanges because they are not regulated and they really want everything to be regulated and by the book. So unfortunately, the only way for them to start is on their own exchange with a license where you will be able to buy one coins for, for, for fiat money, maybe even for bitcoins. I hope I gave them that. Uh, suggestion. Uh, also, they will make physical exchanges for 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 regions where people don't have banks. I mean, what's good exchange uh, if people need bank to deposit money? You know, if they have no bank. So yes, they will have physical exchanges. Uh, there are no information about that yet. They, they are they are, they are planned. So people will bring cash and they will just receive one coins that they can spend on deal shaker and buy something they cannot buy with cash in their region. That's why Deal Shaker is the key. If Deal Shaker succeeds, then all this will succeed. Uh, now let's see some decentralized networks versus centralized networks. Uh, the benefits of decentralized networks, well, I will, I will read them as, as majority of people thinks, but uh, I have some thoughts about about some of those not, not really work in the real life. Uh, you, you don't need to put trust in a single entity. That's a benefit of the decentralization. It is true, but then again, more, many trust is needed in, in such systems because uh, you, I already talked, uh, even code of Bitcoin is pretty centralized. So let's say all the good, uh, developers are not granted to push their their uh, improvements because some some guy don't doesn't like it uh, i'll give you an example uh, there was this segwit proposal that that was supposed to happen it, i think it was supposed to happen in november last year and it was supposed to make a side chain on the bitcoin blockchain where some parts of transactions like identities uh, was supposed to be stored uh, just to to put uh, less strain on the block size of the Bitcoin, which uh, which was uh, one megabyte. And uh, we've seen that this this uh, uh, this uh, fork never happened. And I read about it, and it makes sense. Actually, uh, Bitmain has has something to say about this. Uh, their miners, sand miners, don't uh, uh, how, how to say don't support side chains, so you could not mine the segwit uh, blocks with ant miners. So they just decided not to not to do with this upgrade. Did they do against the benefit of users and network? Yes, they did. So I don't know. Maybe maybe if someone centralized with centralized government would uh, care about the system, uh, good decisions and 100% of decisions uh, that are good for the, for the concept were being made. So we can see Bitcoin Cash, it's, it has almost, almost, if not totally centralized governance, not network, network but governance. Uh, and they are actually planning to go marketing who knows? Who knows what what will be? We, we see this 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 guy Roger Ver, 
pretty pretty hyped and, and confident that Bitcoin Cash will replace Bitcoin, but we'll see what Lightning Network will bring for Bitcoin. Uh, I'm not so sure because all the all the difference that Bitcoin Cash has is actually eight, eight megabyte uh, block. And I don't I don't know if it's really enough to serve mass market, but let's see. Uh, no single point of failure. That is really, really true and really good benefit to decentralize because you cannot just turn it off by coming into the office of the company and sh shut it off. You can turn it off by, let's say, ordering internet providers who hold BGP protocols to just uh, block uh, Bitcoin protocol and no, 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 no transactions will actually be able to go through BGP, but it's almost impossible to happen because you have so many BGP gateways, so many BGP servers, so many uh, providers, but it's possible. Uh, it's easier so to survive under cor corrupt government and there's no censorship. So yes, you can actually, let's say Steemit platform is run on the blockchain and it's decentralized. There's You, you cannot go to some central authority and say, Turn off this news, this article, or something. It's, it's impossible. So that's pretty good. But then again, it can be abused. So is, is this good or bad? I don't know. It's more likely to be open for developers, of course, because it's open source. Anyone can see the code. And you know how they say two heads are smarter than one head. If you have the code with some uh, bugs and current developers don't see it, maybe someone will see it and help. But also, he cannot. He can, he can decide not to help. He can decide to go to make an exploit and make advantage. We've seen this many times in in, in cryptocurrencies, for example. Uh, lastly, there were several uh, smaller cryptocurrencies that uh, that uh, people just use uh, found found the exploit and they used the uh, cloud service uh, providers to become minor and they bought enough hashing power to do 51 percent attack and they just, just just took millions of of double spent transactions by by doing that of, of course it's almost impossible to do it with bitcoin but uh, if if there was a cloud service that uh, that would uh, be able to provide enough hashing power uh, to, um, to 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 do uh, Bitcoin fifty one percent, there's one there was one website. It's called like Crypto fifty one point dot something. I've seen that it would cost you for an hour of fifty one attack. It would cost you. Uh, some something more than half a million of dollars per hour to do uh, fifty one percent of Bitcoin, but only if you would find a platform that is able to provide this. Uh, because in this six six thousand uh, six uh, six hundred thousand dollars, it's not counting the hardware that you need to buy actually. So yeah, openness can is good, but uh, then again. Uh, cryptocurrencies are so young and maybe real players are not yet in, in it. You know, maybe maybe actually maybe they found some back doors or something and are waiting for the moment to use it. We we, we cannot know it. Uh, for example, you can you can you can see uh, you can look at like uh, uh, Unix. Unix is a core core uh, core platform to be used for Linux most of the distros so unix is something like a blockchain and linux with its its distros like uh get like uh, debian like centos red hat they're all, all distros uh continued with central uh governance and development but it's open source and then in like 80s apple decided to use this unix and use it for closed uh, source system and they made it they made the mac os right uh, of course they were attacked by unix community uh, for doing that but today mac os is mass ma mass adopted and easy to use and more secure than linux is it's almost it's mostly used by uh, server server specialists for hosting websites with pss and central i had such business so i know about it I use with Linux. I use Linux. Uh, so I don't know. I, I see this 
blockchain thing also maybe it's a good thing long term to have a closed system of course you will have some opposition because they cannot see a damn coins in the blockchain but then again maybe it's good for security i don't know we'll see about that how it goes uh, later on uh, now for the drawbacks well, the central cryptocurrency is not being owned by any, any, anyone, so there's no power that can actually ban you from using the cryptocurrency. But we can see it maybe ending with EOS example, because EOS did freeze accounts for, for uh, those scammers. Uh, they are really suitable for crime. You can easily launder money, you can tax evade, you can sell on the dark web, etc. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't believe that it's actually that easy because you can track transactions in Bitcoin. It's not untrackable. You cannot track them in Zcash, Monero, uh, was privacy coin because on some of them you don't see, uh, you, you don't see amount, some of them you don't see dates, uh, uh, etc. But uh, those cryptocurrencies can can and will be used for crime. Scaling is another drawback of decentralization because people just cannot agree. You need something, someone to lead the people. That's how world, the world functions. Why don't we have anarchy? Uh, but we'll see, maybe they'll fix it with the proof of stake algorithms, we'll see. I'm pretty confident that they, they will fix it. Uh, one of the, one of the bigger drawbacks, in my opinion, is that uh, with this proof of stake system, uh, people vote about everything and uh, the same power of vote has ignorant user that has no clue what he's talking about as the real credible developer or something that knows what's going on. So it is possible for ignorant users to actually do more harm than, than good for, for the sake of uh, pro progress and improvements. Uh, also, uh, also, this volatility is a problem because all they do is just let the price uh, flow on the exchanges and let the open market make make the price. Open market is good, but if it's regulated, if it's not regulated, we see what happens. You just list there and you're done. I mean, for utility coins, it's not so much so big of a problem because if you need some utility coin. You'll just buy it at whatever price it is and spend it on the, on the on the platform to get what you want. But for currency coins, it's pretty pretty important to be stable. Uh, there is no security for users and storage issues. Uh, yes, if you if you lose your hard drive, let's say you keep your coins on a hard drive or USB drive or cold wallet. If you get fished, if you lose your private key. Your coins are lost. No one can help you. That's a problem with decentralization. Uh, I don't see it necessarily as a bad thing. I mean, you need to have a brain, you know, to live. But then again, <laughs> it's it's reality that most people are not IT experts. They're, they they do, do have life problems. They do have focus on other things, and they just cannot uh, be that that careful in these things. And they are used on the central uh, platforms to actually care about them. That's why I think that, that one coin is maybe, maybe doing good thing with, with, with this approach because they can for sure help people and it's a good thing. Uh, <clears throat> also the last, in my opinion, uh, drawback of the, the central cryptocurrencies is because of their anonymous uh, nature, uh, they're impossible to comply with government regulations because they are left for government regulators to regulate them and deem them as either security or or uh, commodity or something. And if you are regulated as such, you at, at least for currency, cryptocurrency, you just cannot be accepted by, by merchants. So this main idea of cryptocurrency that Bitcoin was trying to make is killed. By the, by, the, by the same anonymous. I'm talking about legal merchants. Of course, there will always be someone who will accept uh, anonymous cryptocurrency and they will sell it because uh, then again, people also do it with the cash. 
but then again, white market, in my opinion, is way more bigger than black market. So let's see some benefits of centralization. They are ready for enterprise use and government usage. You can see, maybe you heard about the Hyperledger. It was made by IBM and gave to Linux Foundation open source community to develop. And I have some friends also that are, that are using uh, uh, Hyperledger to, uh, for, to, to transfer the enterprise business on the blockchain. Uh, so who, are, who is holding all those nodes and network of force in the company? Most of them don't even have a blockchain because it's their, their business. Why do they care? Why do they, would they care if people would see their transactions inside? Let's say you move salaries of your employees to the blockchain and you want to put the public explorer so everyone could see each other salaries. No, that's, that's not going to work. Uh, but uh, then again, it's centralized. It's centralized. And it's, it's the only way that it's suitable for enterprise because if this enterprise needs more uh, or either storage or CPU power, they can just do it. But what if they would use, let's say, uh, Ethereum network or something? They depend on this decentralized network that just cannot seem to find consensus. Right? Uh, when, when you are centralized, you can empower KYC and AML to comply with regulations. We can see this with one coin. They are really pushing this uh, KYC. We are yet to see some automatic solution. Unfortunately, they hoped that they will be ready until last December, but software isn't ready and they just employed people to, to do uh, KYC, just like banks and exchanges do. But with all the, those millions of users, it's really slow, sorry. That's it, that's for, for it for now. But later when they are public and they really have influx of millions of users, it's pretty easy to outsource KYC approval people and they will do it. Uh, uh, when you're centralized, of course, you, you, you don't have scalability issues because you, you, are, you own your hardware and you can, uh, you can add uh, whatever you need without someone uh, denying it or, or whatever. Uh, there is, of course, total security for users. So if you get hacked, get scammed, forget something, if you are stupid, let's say, well, company can help you because that's their duty according to terms of, of agreement. Uh, they can control volatility because the, uh, they own the, the ecosystem. So uh, they own the algorithms that calculate price and they can implement those in usability platforms, in trading, so it's, it's, it's very good. Uh, well, I talked about how coin market cap being centralized, making some decisions actually made some prices change. So centralization is something. Um, when you are centralized users that do not know what they're talking about, just cannot ruin the, the system. They just, they are just not listened, ignored, you know. Uh, someone, some people say, if you are centralized, then why do you need a blockchain? You can just use SQL. Well, I think SQL is uh, not that good and secure as blockchain because, uh, uh, let's say, I'm a, I'm an admin, and uh, the the company saves salaries in SQL Server. I can actually edit those tables and cover the tra tracks, but I cannot do it in a private blockchain because someone would see it. So because uh, uh, stamps and Merkle root wouldn't uh, uh, sync. Uh, so that is, uh, yeah, and less resources is needed to, and more customization is available because again, you don't need to put all those uh, improve, improvement proposals and people vote and some want it, some don't want it. You just uh, see what's best for the company and just do it. Uh, now, the drawbacks of centralization, uh, transactions are not publicly visible and only users and company have benefits. This is a general benefit, uh, a drawback because uh, one of the points of cryptocurrencies, but we'll see about that in the future, is so everyone could see transactions in the blockchain with using public explorer. 
Uh, I'm not sure about that, although I would like that to happen in one coin, to have a public uh, blockchain uh, employer. Uh, but uh, is it really good that uh, anyone can see your transactions, how much, how many coins you have, or how much money you have, uh, and what are you send, who are you sending to? I'm not sure it's, it's a good thing. We'll see about that. Maybe, maybe we'll see if banks will have, let's say, um, if banks will have a public explorer, someone will say yes, but banks do not sell education and take money for the blockchain high, blah, blah. Yes, true, but banks do have fees. And I don't think they will lessen fees when they, I, I even, I even uh, there are some, some banks that actually are using blockchain as we speak, but no one knows it and people Paying the same fees, so mm, I don't know what which is worse. Uh, trust is needed that company will not conduct bank, bank transactions. That can be solved if they would store Merkle root. That is that is essentially a sum of digital stamps of uh, blocks. Uh, if they would store it on public uh, network, which they cannot edit, so people would be able to see. If, if if they would do some some bad transactions, if they, if if one coin company will ever do it, I don't know, but it's a solution. We are talking about centralized, not not just one coin. And of course, one one drawback that I don't know if if will be able to be fixed by centralized system is the single point of failure, because if you really if company dies, network dies, but we see we are seeing in Ripple that is centralized. They, they did begin very centralized, but they decentralized the network. And uh, I believe up, 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 until, up, up until now, uh, the, 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 the Ripple net wouldn't go down if the company would do, if, to go, go down. So I think this is possible to me also to fix. Again, I don't know if one coin will do it, uh, but there, there, is, there, there are solutions for everything. But uh, then again, if a community works in favor of the concept, I don't see why company wouldn't uh, follow uh, this, but if all people want is to sell coins and get out, then who would, uh, who would actually from the company want to work more? It's the same like your immune system, you know, if your brain, if you don't want to live, your immune system will not fight the disease, you know, it's, 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 it's simple as that. Here you can see how it looks when you're centralized, when you are decentralized, you have nodes, that that actually does that and when you are distributed it's all, all nodes are connected here uh, this is actually a website uh, called are we decentralized yet something like that uh, here you can see some major cryptocurrencies uh, and how how many entities own uh, more than 50 percent of voting or, or mining power voting for proof of stake mining for proof of work uh, here we can see that Bitcoin, Ethereum have three entities who own more than 50%. Uh, why is this important? Uh, maybe for someone it's not, but uh, we need to trust those three entities that they will not make bad transactions, double spends, to take people's money and something, and something like that. So a lot of trust is needed that they don't do it because they already own the voting power. Ripple have the only one entity that can do anything. So yes, we need to trust them that they will not do it. Bitcoin Cash have three, Litecoin, three, Cardano. Oh, well, Cardano is, yeah, they, they do have a minute, but not, not, not all modules are ready. Uh, Stellar is like a fork of uh, Ripple. They are more focused on uh, micropayments, but they also have one, IOTA. Well, I, IOTA uses Tangle and they, they uh, Tangle is something different than, than blockchain because uh, transaction, uh, new transactions are validating old transactions and for, for when network is not uh, massively used, it's slow. So they, they use something called coordinator to speed this up and they are, that, that's why they own uh, more, most uh, voting power. So they are denied right now by these, those decentralized anarchists. 
that they are centralized, but they don't care. They're just at one point when they reach the network usability, they will just turn off this this uh, coordinator and everything will be fine. But we'll, we we are yet to see that it, it's un unproven. We we know about the problems that some more many transactions get stuck in the tangle. So I don't know. This DAG uh, directed a cyclic graph thing doesn't look like something that can ever replace blockchain. Uh, hash graph is something different and they are also yet to be proven because they, they are in, uh, currently in a private mode and they have many transactions that they work very well but when, when they go to the public mode where people are using nodes we'll see if that that will be the case then we can see we can see we, we can see that oh, one two or three entities own most of the hashing power. So trust is needed that they will not do. So it's not that different from one coin actually, but we know all the benefits that one coin ecosystem actually brings. We've talked about this. This is from last year. This is the last slide. We can also see value distribution in Bitcoin. Why, why does this even matter? Again, this has something to do with trust uh, and I'll explain why. Here we can see that uh, most of the addresses have very, very low number of Bitcoins. So let's say from one to 10 Bitcoins, we have only half of million addresses. It's 2%. 100,000 to 1 million Bitcoins are owned in two addresses. This is kind of old. I think it's a bit different now, but not much. So why, why is this important? Uh, uh, for now, when you go to coin market cap and see a Bitcoin price and daily volume, it's around, I believe, last time I, I checked, it was 800,000 Bitcoins in, was traded in 24 hours, and that was making the price of Bitcoin. So we see a man with a million uh, of Bitcoins in his wallet. What if he decides to spread those Bitcoins on all exchanges and sell them? Would that kill the price of Bitcoin? and kill the usability even more. I mean, I, I don't know if that, that's gonna happen. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to make a fud, but it's possible and trust is needed that this will not happen. So yeah, this, this, would, be, this would be it. And uh, you can ask questions if you want about uh, anything that we sp spoke right now. Someone can speak, you're muted. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, and Igor, this was an amazing information that we actually needed to know. And this is a really, really thing that a lot of people don't understand the concept at all. And I will also unmute a couple of people here and some uh, people are here as well. King James, and <clears throat> what, what would you say? I'm, I'm so excited. I mean, so, Mr. Hello, Gary. King James you, is one Mr. of the. You hear me loud and clear? Yes. Yes, yes. King James yeah, is one of the inner circle of one coin. And he's been tremendously working in Caribbean. And he may have questions or also talk about his opinion. What do you think? What you have heard? And how was the proposition? Well, I'm extremely excited to just first and foremost be on a call such as this. I noticed that Mr. Duncan is on a call. Mr. Sharif, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Mr. Igor Krenik, the, the hero of many uh, amongst this work that we're taking with this cryptocurrency journey. I, I pretty much am um, just excited. And the question is, Igor, I know we had a little conversation in Bosnia, but maybe you could probably expound on this question or thought. What do you believe is going to happen to the token concept as far as when one coin goes live and the mining opportunity? I believe we are in part of the mining process now. And when we go live, that mining process ends. Is that correct? Oh, oh you mean a mining process in actual blockchain? Yeah. Well, well, the mining uh, process for the normal persons like me and you. The, the coins will still be mined by the company, however, but the mining process yeah, for the opportunity. Yeah is now we don't have that opportunity going further correct 
Yes, yes. Right now, the blockchain side of mining is done solely by the company because they own the master node. And uh, uh, we users mine quotes uh, through the tokens. So you need to provide exchange certain num number of tokens that you receive with education pack in order to get one coin. What I think, based on some talks, uh, uh, talks from the company, that uh, after they go public, they will still be about education. Education pack will never, one academy will, ne will not cease to exist, but uh, packages will not bring tokens, but one coins. So that will be also possible for, 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 for one life to start living, to start educating people. Uh, by the way, I've met uh, many financial experts, bankers who know well, about the science. They are uh, involved with OneCoin and they did go through all seven courses and they say it's a real thing. Uh, I did also read it. I, I like it, but I'm not uh, an expert. So I guess I learned something I knew and I did and I used that knowledge in, uh, on the exchanges. So uh, this education is a real thing. It's not just a store, uh, storefront like, like some people say. So, but after go, oh, going public, those coins will, uh, those packs will come with one coin, probably. Maybe they will change it, but for now, I know that. But uh, where will those new coins come from? Of course, company will continue mining. I mean, uh, they cannot stop mining. They would need to stop blockchain. You know? uh, say again. Hey, Igor, that's an amazing question, amazing answer. And I share those sentiments with you. I believe the education is absolutely real. And uh, without it, I don't think the world of cryptocurrency will have so much knowledge out there. I believe One Life has sparked a lot of persons, whether they involve or not. We have really delivered in the world of educating and opening the eyes and minds of many individuals. So, me totally, this project has been a huge success. Like only seeing it get bigger and better, especially with the DS Shaker platform and reusability. Because I believe you pointed that out in so many words that most of the other cryptocurrencies out there, they don't really have any usability. And the level of usability we bring, they're really showing to us that this is money, spendable money. It is, it is, it is, it is mind boggling to, to, to really be, be understand that this dispensation, this opportunity we have will not have a replay. This is a once in a lifetime moment and we need to make sure we spread that word, help persons understand what it is we have to offer and really expose this business, expose in a massive way Expose, and expose, and expose again. That is my thoughts, man. I really thank you guys for even allowing me to share on this call. I'm in the barbershop now, so I, I look forward to joining you guys at another point in time. Let me tell you just uh, two things uh, cross my mind right now. Um, uh, for those who follow trends, right? There are there are some people, credible people, who are talking about trends, and they are. And the three trends that are that will explode uh, from from now on. Uh, first one is online ed education. Uh, several tens of uh, tens of uh, billions of dollars were, were spent on on online education just in 2016. So online education is is going to boom because uh, universities will come online. Everything will come online. Second point are advertising platforms. So platforms who are actually uh, providing uh, a link to users and buyers, they, they are begin beginning uh, more and more popular. And cryptocurrency is also a third point that is booming and will boom. So if you combine all those three <coughs> great uh, uh, upcoming trends, uh, you, you will see that actually one coin already empowers, embraces all those three. As and something else, uh, <laughs> I've heard on some event, someone said what Bruce Lee said: "Say, don't be like water. Water is uh, constantly adapting to others, to environment. Be like fire. Make your own way. Why? Do, what, how? How do I? How do I resemble this?" to one coin ecosystem. Uh, you see all those cryptocurrencies that, that, that only want to list on public exchange, list on coin market cap, uh, blah, 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 and that's all good. They are water. They are, they are just 
adjusting to their cartel, Bitcoin cartel. Uh, of, of course, technical people define those technologies. Please, please, please mute. Please mute your King James mute. Okay, I muted him. Yeah, because he's loud. Uh, yeah, they all like water, so they are all uh, adopting to that to that to that system. And we unregulated, and many manipulation happen. Uh, one coin okay. is trying is trying to be like fire and making their own way. It's not easy. It's not easy because you are first mover about that. The many opposition, uh, you are not self evident. You are attacked. They think you are a scam. You are this. You are that. But we see all those authorities investigate actual company in Sweden. They recently closed investigation germany went in nothing is there there was there are some reports but they cannot be public by the company they need to be public by uh german by authority so no this is this is real thing uh, and uh, in my opinion how i view all this one coin success, success will depend on community not on the company of course the basis is the company because they need to de deliver those platforms and licenses and everything uh, not everything is up to them, but at the end, those platforms can just uh, fly in the air if community is not using them properly as intended. So community needs to understand that it's all about usability, not just trading. And if Deal Shaker works fine, everything will be fine. They they already have plans for uh, post uh, point of sale. Uh, hardware. They're not sure if they will use QR code, uh, retina scan, or face recognition. There are so many, so, so many technologies they can they can make their own devices that stores can actually use to accept one coins, not just deal shaker. You know, uh, possibilities are huge. You know, uh, they, they do have do do have struggle with IT, of course, and with IT without IT they they have nothing. But the way I heard. Mr. Arthur Duncan found a good idea that is currently working on Deal Shaker. They have many people and they, they are so far good. And if they succeed in Deal Shaker, they will get to work uh, all other all other platforms. So, and there is also one more uh, IT company that, that is trying to fix all those bugs that are left after the, this server take, taking and all the this old IT team. Yeah, so that, that 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 that's all I would I I wanted to say. That that is a really great answer. Uh, uh, really answered properly. And yes, of course, uh, tomorrow we'll be having another webinar the same time as today, and it will be talking about the deal shaker and the new strategy of deal shaker. A lot of information that you guys gonna hear is gonna be amazing. Yours, honestly, is something blow mind. What I, what I just heard as well. It is a refresh again for me to explain and represent to others the right way, the right information. <clears throat> and, and this is uh, the most important for education that we really need it and for us to understand. There is three people who, was, who raised the hand and these three people I'll ask them, uh, they can ask the question and then we can stop from here, okay? You can talk, you can talk, Stephen, do you like? Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Will one coin be having any ATMs like Bitcoin have got them, you know, quite a, like nearly 200 now in the UK. Will one coin be having any? Why wouldn't they have? Why wouldn't they have them? If, uh, but first things first, Bitcoin also had first exchange and then usability and then uh, actual adoption of usability and bit, uh, ATM scan late, came later. Uh, so why wouldn't one coin also have them? Uh, I, I do not have, uh, have any information about that, but uh, I, I don't see why wouldn't they have it. You know, if, if uh, uh, exchange goes well, if deal shaker goes well, if, uh, if they have all those physical exchanges, that will take receive cash and, and give uh, give coins to people. They can have ATMs too. Why not? But we'll see about that. It's pretty distant future. <laughs> first things first, in my opinion. I agree. Why well, do I mean if uh, we have an Apple Pay, Android Pay, and Connect Card? Why do why why one Pay cannot be there? 
uh, one uh, of. Uh, uh, one of let, let me just touch on cards. Uh, people say, will we, will we use cards uh, to spend one coins? Uh, I think it's about time people understand that cards will not exist for a long time. Uh, there are new technologies. There are, you know, <laughs> you, you see what, uh, what Apple iPhone X brought. There is a, a face recognition scanner. I mean, there are better ways to pay than cards. So, Cards is 20, 20 something years old technology. Why would we, uh, they are trying to make something new, cryptocurrency is new. Uh, why, why do we need to depend on the cards? And then again, cards are issued by banks. So why would we need to go back to banks? We need to think uh, ahead. So cryptocurrencies, not just one coin, cryptocurrencies in general, one coin has the advantage because they have central governance and someone to look for it. Uh, but anonymous cryptocurrency, they just cannot agree with, with all this. I wish all they, they would succeed with it. Uh, so cryptocurrencies need to look, look for some other way of, of, of being uh, uh, spent spend on, uh, on points of uh, service. You know, like Visa and MasterCard, they made those post terminals and you, you just go swipe your card. You know? But th that's that centralized company who made that. Why cannot cryptocurrency companies make something like that to to be to accept uh, their cryptocurrency? So just don't don't just limit yourself to cryptocurrencies. Also, people sit and say, when will I be able to send my one coin, sell my one coins for euros or US dollars? But you are educating people how fiat currency is actually declining and that's the point of cryptocurrency to replace fiat money. Then why do we sit and ask ourselves when will we go back to the fiat money? Uh, it, it, it just, it, it's bad in my opinion. Well, let's use those uh, coins at merchants. If merchants will accept it, if there is a company that can comply with governance, uh, those coins, those cryptocurrencies can be legally tender, legal tender in, in the countries and merchants will be able to tax them. Why do we need to uh, send them to cash? We can just uh, sell, send it to merchant, merchant will send it to other merchant. I mean, this is a long process we are talking about, not just for one coin, for every cryptocurrency. But if we want to be part of this cryptocurrency financial revolution, we need to understand how to do it, not just go back to cards and and, uh, and banks and, and uh, fiat money. It would be great if banks would actually accept cryptocurrencies also. <coughs> that, that would be helpful for, for start. And there are some countries that are banning central banks of closing accounts or banning cryptocurrency uh, uh, transactions, which is good, which is good. So yes, that, 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 that's about it. Okay, um, I have got one question from external, and someone asked it from the Facebook. Uh, they want to understand the proof of work and uh, proof of stake blockchain type. Um, is is there any difference in uh, like uh, Ripple, like Ripple? Well, actually, uh, yeah, Ripple has their own Ripple Net. It's not actually a blockchain. Uh, I didn't uh, technically research uh, how how does Ripple work. But it's important to know that they have uh, their own nodes. Uh, I don't know if they have more than 40 something nodes they had uh, last time I checked. But their transactions are almost instant and that's important to know. Um, for proof of work, I've already uh, explained uh, in, in, in simple matter how, 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 uh, how does it work and how does proof of stake work. If someone wants to know more, you can just Google it. There's, there, there are so many explanations about the two. Uh, allegedly, proof of stake is, a, is supposed to be uh, faster and uh, more cheap uh, and more scalable, but we are yet to see that in practice. So far, it's only on paper, right? Uh, as for OneCoin, people say, what do they do? What do they have? I know between lines that they do also have proof of work. Actually, we can know that by the mere fact that their blocks are producing one coins. If there would be proof of stake, that wouldn't happen. They could just mint all the coins in the Genesis block and give it to people. But no, they are mining. So they are proof of stake. Uh, and uh, I think they use X11 algorithm, but that's not really important because uh, 
they they started this new blockchain, whatever it is, in October 20, 2016, and it was kind of good back then. But now, in 2019, 18, it's not so good anymore if those uh, new projects actually deliver. So I can say that one coin doesn't have to be stuck with this blockchain. They can evolve. They can. They can. They can. Let, let's say hash graph it, uh, would be a great uh, thing. They are licensed, patented. There's a company behind it. Behind it, uh, licensing licenses. Licensing is supposed to prevent forks uh, or make them illegal. So if you uh, if you own a, a license for Hashgraph and your network is using using Hashgraph instead of blockchain, uh, you are legal. But if someone forks your because because it's open source, if someone forks your network. Uh, with your transactions, uh, they can actually start using it, but they will be illegal because they don't have a, a license and who will use illegal network, you know. So, yeah, they are currently working as intended, this blockchain, and transactions are instant. So I don't see a point of asking so many technical questions. I mean, I understand that uh, people like this technology, but uh, the blockchain is not actually the most important thing in, uh, in one coin ecosystem. You know, it's, it's a whole concept, the usability, you know, and at the end, people, people are important. Blockchain is there only to permanently store uh, transactions, but they do need to work on some, some level of transparency in the blockchain. And I, I, I think that, that that will be fixed. I agree with that as well. Yeah. I mean, that's one of them, one of the main reasons. And then there are two people asking questions. Uh, Myro and Omnichi too. I don't think he's asking question. Okay, Joan. Okay, unmute Joan. <coughs> No question. Okay. Is that Joe? Yes, go on. Yes, hello. Yes, greetings to you. Um, what I want to, well, I have an idea, but there's a lot of people who are concerned about tax with regards to cryptocurrency. Is that something that we can have a little talk about? I'm not. I'm not really a tax person, but I can. I, I can say several uh, things. Uh, what yes. I know, uh, every country has its own way of taxation. Not just uh, taxation period. You know, uh, I know that many countries actually implemented tax tax uh, rules for cryptocurrencies, but since. Uh, since uh, those countries who actually made uh, some regulations for taxation and and, uh, and 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 such, they deem cryptocurrency as commodities because they are currently only traded. People are making or losing money trading. So those countries who actually allow uh, people to pay tax, uh, they they ask you to to record USA to number one here. Uh, they ask you to record your trades and to uh, report your profits and pay tax. If you report uh, losses, then there's only a percentage of what you can deduct from your capital gains or from different businesses. So actually, right now, the governments are uh, taxing cryptocurrencies, but it's mainly on the profit <coughs> made on trading. Why is that? Because no cryptocurrency is usable yet. Uh, if one coin starts to be usable at merchants, we will we will need also to make this impact. Uh, we will need to actually have those licenses, whatever is need, and uh, to be deemed as legal tender in the in the countries. Maybe we will not be legal tender right now in all countries. All this negativity also doesn't help, but it's easy to it's easy to actually explain because. Everything is clear. Why is that? Why is that? So we would need actually uh, to be a legal tender in, 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 in countries. But if uh, Bitcoin is legal tender, like it, it is legal tender is in USA, it is legal tender in Germany, then also one coin can be 
uh, once they are public. Right now, they cannot do it. I mean, it's not even an issue. So the, uh, one coin is uh, if if they uh, succeed with the deal shaker and this usability thing, uh, actually they might be the first uh, to be taxed as a currency that actually merchants receive. So if you pay something with uh, uh, one coins, uh, actually no, if you uh, are merchant and receive uh, uh, one coins for goods, then you have to implement it in your, in your books. I don't see this happening anytime soon. Why? Because every country has its own fiat currency and you are only allowed to accept that currency, not other. For example, in my country, it's a dinar and I as a merchant cannot accept euros. I mean, I can, but it's illegal. So what I think that is that merchants would, uh, for the start at least, would need to re uh, receive one coin a deal shaker and then sell it for, for, for fiat and then report that as, a, as income and tax it. So that's why it's good that uh, on this exchange, merchants will have uh, priority to sell coins and we users will be forced but some kind of to spend them. I have no problems with that actually. Now, uh, as for users who have uh, uh, some amount of one coins, well, depends on what country you live, how many coins you have, uh, how will you report it, how will you got them, how much money did you pay, you, you paid nothing to, for one coin, so you will actually pay, need to pay some profit tax, in some countries it's 10%, in some countries it's 20, 30, 50, I don't know, you will need to pay pretty much amount of money in order for your one coins to be legal and you will need to, to do it. So when governments see how many people own how many coins, I think they would see it better to accept it, tax it, than to deny it. Just like cryptocurrencies. Many governments were talking about banning cryptocurrencies because it's too easy to use for crime and too hard to regulate. But then again, they realized that, uh, you know, if you ban it, they will, people will use it even more. So let's regulate it. And in July, we, we have this summit of G20 regulators. I don't know what, what, what will happen. They will probably talk about cryptocurrencies and do all those reg regulations. Some people even predict, predict huge crash of crypto market in the July after this G20 event. But we'll see what, what, what will happen. Important thing is that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. And uh, I don't think governments will uh, disallow central, uh, central uh, cryptocurrencies because they are really easy to regulate and, and comply. You know? why, why would they ban that? Maybe, maybe decentralized evangelists are fearing that governments would only accept centralized models and then they would be deemed illegal. But I don't know, they're just conspiracy theory in my opinion. So to sum it up, taxation is yet to come, to come. Some countries already have them, but it's mostly for trading, for profits and losses. But as for merchants, uh, it's not even deemed as a currency yet because it's, it, it cannot be regulated. It's not issued by any, any central authority. If one court will see, we will we will succeed there. We will see. If merchants do accept it, then why not? I mean, governments do like taxes, right? If you have some new capital at people, that means new tax for for governments. Why would they refuse it? That's that's about it for this question. And one major question that a lot of people ask, and this is something and uh, for everybody that is already on this call and Facebook. And I want them to listen carefully and what, I mean, the important, uh, oh, the most important uh, that a lot of people is the lack of spending time or not getting the time of uh, getting as many coins as possible. What would you suggest them uh, if, say, thank God, if we go to public or we go to our exchange and we are very, very successful? And do you suggest other people to have like 100 or 1,000 or 2,000 coins? Okay. Uh, it's actually a no-brainer if you understand uh, the concept. Uh, people need to learn that DealShaker 
It's a platform for usability that is participating in the price creation of one coin. So if I have 100,000 one coins and I want to go and buy a car for let's say 5,000 one coins, uh, I have two options. I can go to exchange and wait as long as it takes to sell those 5,000 coins and it will make a sell wall and it will participate in the sell wall and it can pull the price down, right? And I will take my cash and I will take my car. Merchant got his money, all fine. Or I can go to the merchant, explain the situation, and I can bring him to deal shaker. I can explain that he can, I mean, you all heard Peter Kralov talk. It was awesome. Uh, I mean, if, if all merchants were thinking like that, it's, it's done. So we, uh, he can advertise for free to millions of users and he can accept one coins 100% let's say for my car and let him go to exchange and sell the car the, the coins so what, what what did i do i participated in the price up by buying on spending coins on deal shaker and the merchant spent uh, sold coins and he participated in the price down Let, let's let's just make it that simple it's not really that simple but you, you get my point so we have uh, an opportunity to participate in stable value because if we if we are using it and merchants are selling it that it, maybe it can be stable if 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 the, if uh, intervention is needed company can intervene uh, because they have a buffer you know they have they have uh, excess amount some some reserves you know like central banks you know if if my native currency drops because of the lack of uh, demand uh, my central bank will intervene and uh, sell reserves of euros to, you know, <coughs> to keep to, to keep our currency uh, uh, stable. Again, I don't know if the company will do it, but I kind of believe that uh, it's what it takes, and I believe that they will work for the best and they will try to do it because uh, if you remember uh, when old blockchain was shutting off. Dr. Rujo said that they don't have enough coins for merchants and many people didn't understand what does that mean. You, you see many critics say that it's a bullshit. But uh, what does that mean? This old blockchain used to mine too few coins to uh, even uh, accommodate uh, new people who, who were arriving, let alone to, to save some something for, for buffer. But Dr. Rujo being a banker she knows what it takes to prevent uh, deflation uh, she didn't see it viable because uh, all the coins are used by by users uh, she does not have um, any coins to, to to try and stop deflation now when they own most of the coins they are out of uh, circulation i would really appeal on all the network not to hype one coin market cap by uh, multiplying current internal price with total number of coins mined. It's, I believe, uh, 42 billion, according to height, Bogla height. Please do not multiply 20 euros by 42 billion because it's not the market cap. We don't know yet how many coins are owned by people. Uh, According to all the transparency in the blockchain, that's a bad start, but it is how it is. We don't know how many coins are owned by people. So we don't know actual market cap, no. We don't, uh, this price isn't even publicly credible. So please don't call, a, don't talk about this. It's my personal uh, uh, wish uh, that One Life uh, d do not really hype this uh, market cap, you know. It's, it's, it's poking people's eyes and ears. So uh, when they own uh, more, most of the coins, they can actually, you know, if people are buying, if, if people want to buy coins, and let, let's say our demand is, uh, our supply actually, our sell wall, user sell wall is low because we are actually using Bitcoin, but people want to buy one coins, uh, then price would probably go too much up and there will be volatility. And then the company could actually bring new coins from, from off the circulation into circulation and actually participate 
in the in the in the stable in price. That's that's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong some somewhere, but the way I see it so far, it's 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 like that. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. That's really really a good answer. And uh, we will accept uh, two or three. I mean, how many questions can you take? So we have to ask you. Me personally. Yes. Just keep on going. I'm here. So, so uh, one question because I'm actually doing it one the other. Would uh, uh, there is a question from Algeria and his name is Hussein uh, Tootu. And he asked, will the one coin or the transactions will be much faster in the future to how it is right now? What do you think? But they are they are almost instant even now. Why do, why do they need to be faster? I don't understand. Maybe they think about uh, KYC approvals or deal shaker approvals. I mean, when you send coins from one account to another, when you buy deal shaker, you will get those those coins very soon, almost in this instant. The way I, I, I looked at it. I mean, maybe they think about KYC and deal shaker approvals. If so, uh, you've seen what you've seen what happened on, on the GLG training. You've seen a new system for decentralized approvals of uh, of deals by certified you know people. So not, it, it will not be that companies only want to, to prove deals and merchants. So you as a network will do it. As for KYC, for now, it, it is slow, but I hope it will be outsourced in the future, or maybe we will live to see this automatic software that, that can do it. Okay, That's, thank you. Thank you very much. And a couple of people raised their hand. Uh, I, I would just like to touch on the transactions again. It is possible, it is possible, I don't know that, but it is possible that uh, if, if uh, this, let, let's call the deal shaker and this front end uh, back office and wallet uh, layer two off chain. Uh, everything is firstly done there and it works, no matter if blockchain works or doesn't. We, we've seen it those two weeks in February, I believe, when, uh, when server with blockchain was taken. Yes. Uh, it didn't work, but deal shaker worked. Everything worked, uh, and probably uh, again, I I don't have any proof, but probably when they returned and turned the blockchain on again, uh, we we could see the timestamps uh, difference in, in like sixteen days between two next blocks. Uh, probably <laughs> all those transactions were something like backlogged on this layer two and was uh, uh, synchronized in. Uh, Blockchain. I would really like to check that, but we cannot right now. Um, what if in future there are so many transactions that uh, layer two have too many, uh, too large backlog, and this uh, blockchain being proof of work becomes slow even for centralized system? Maybe that will not happen, but I don't know. What if? Uh, that's why I said that one point is not closed to this current technology. They are watching. I know for a fact that they are watching other technologies, other possibilities. So if maybe it will not happen, but I don't know what if. Did someone send something? No, it's just meant I was reading something on Facebook and your voice came out again. Ah, okay. Uh, so uh, if uh, if if there is a need to improve the the, the underlying technology, they will do it. They can do it because they are central govern, centralized government and they can change it, whatever. Uh, but I don't think that will happen before they mine all the coins in current blockchain. So if they even switch to, to something new, they would need some, uh, or maybe, maybe, maybe they can. Uh, they would need to generate, you know, all the coins, new coins in the new generative block of the new technology. But that, that's something in the future. We don't know when will it happen. Uh, all I know is that they are really open uh, for the future. The, I mean, Dr. Ruja did say that they are here to stay for like 50 years. I mean, who knows what technology will be in 10 years, not just 50 years, you know. So it's, it's good that they can evolve whatever it takes, you know. Well, I've not seen anything since uh, I started in the beginning that things got delayed except the ICO plan. And that I could have caused with uh, the delays of investigation. And, <clears throat> but I, the way I can see is this company is below mine. 
And I can I can agree with in terms of Bitcoin how it's going down, then going up and down, but this is a stable. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you if you can impose some limits uh, and restraints uh, to to stuff that can uh, bring volatility, then you will have a stable price. Uh, maybe that is needed in order for cryptocurrency currency to be actually stable and accepted by merchants. You know? As for delays, well, okay, okay, we had this IPO not ever even canceled officially by company, but I don't think IPO will happen because it's a fundraiser. Maybe they will do something like direct public offering and turn into public sharing company where they find, find some uh, uh, strategic investors who yeah. share like Spotify did. I mean, it's an idea. Maybe, they, maybe that will happen. I mean, we are talking, you know, what's possible. Uh, but the investigation did make some delays, but mostly for deal shaker. You know, for, mostly for deal shaker. Hopefully, we have a good project manager right now and good team, and yeah. they'll deliver it. And okay. yeah, the rest is on the network. Yeah, right. I'm gonna put but, the flying on here. But let me tell you something. Uh, I, I've been several times in the company. I've met uh, several people. I've spent some time even with Constantine. And what I, what I. Uh, could see clearly that those people know what they are doing. They are under pressure. They have problems. That they are they are swimming swimming against the water, you know. But they know what do they what they need to do in order to deliver it. That's all. I I I mean I, I wouldn't do this community work if I didn't see that. I'm not taking any money for anything. Maybe. You know, um, so that's important. Now the rest is really on the community and the network. Yeah, and yeah, I've got three people, and uh, we, I think we're going to be closing from here. And um, Per, are you there? Per, and uh, give five, three, two, one. Okay, next one. And um, Zana, Zana Omar. Hello, yeah. Yes, either. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, it's such a, uh, amazing that we have this uh, webinar. I hope it will be continue. I have uh, one question, please. Okay. You uh, you know, one coin is private company, uh, but w will one coin publish its white paper before or after it goes public or not? Because currently we are not seeing any uh, white paper uh, since the beginning of this company till now. So many people ask it about this. So white paper is the most important thing for any cryptocurrency in the market. So will one coin will publish it or not, please? Okay, I, I like this question. I see it all, all around. Uh, let's see, what is white paper actually? Why, who says that it's most important thing in the cryptocurrency industry? Yes, of course, uh, everyone who is uh, uh, thinking of investing in any cryptocurrency, first thing they will do is read the white paper. But white paper is nothing but a paper with promises, some roadmap, and uh, we have almost three years to prove that most, if not um, uh, above 90% of white papers were not delivered. No, even Bitcoin white paper is not yet delivered. You know? So I, I don't see a point of asking for white paper. One, one thing. The second, uh, uh, white paper might be uh, important for open source, open source uh, projects uh, that uh, actually are uh, delivering uh, uh, like open ledger, you know, so people actually need to, yeah, they are following this transparency thing uh, from the blockchain, you know, from, from all this blockchain idea. Uh, as for one coin, it, it started without this idea because white paper wasn't that important in 2015, the way I, I've seen. It, it became more and more popular from the 2016 uh, because first time I've ever heard someone ask for one coin white paper was I think at some time at the end of or middle of 2017. 
So they're, 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 them being a private company without clear roadmap, uh, they don't have white paper. But uh, white paper is also needed because you need to put it on the website and advertise on, like, say, Facebook or, or uh, Google or other websites. And people need to read what you're offering. But uh, one, coin, one coin decided uh, to go multi-level marketing. So every event that you have, every uh, talk with IMA should actually be something like a white paper. I mean, it's different. Yeah, it's different. Someone can accept it, someone cannot. But you, if you sit and uh, um, talk with someone about this concept, you are the white paper because... Uh, in my opinion, why why is it better? Because people don't like to like to read long stuff, uh, and not in everything is written on the white paper. I know that because I'm a part of many projects, um, and people just don't know all the facts. And we need to go to Telegram group and ask questions, and someone will answer it to us. Uh, with MLM, well, if 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 the network was actually interested to be educated about actual vision. Uh, what we see now in new generation actually is okay, but in the past it wasn't wasn't uh, the case. So actually, all the events, all you guys were supposed to explain all the vision. Uh, now, as for the tech part, uh, white paper is needed for open source because uh, they need to know what they are getting, what what uh, what what kind of code will it be. But one coin is a closed source, and they just don't don't want to disclose it. I mean, Apple doesn't have a white paper for, you know, Mac OS. That's, that's my opinion. That's how I see. I don't see white paper really needed for this project. It is needed. It is demanded right now for, 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 for other ICOs, for open source projects. It's really demanded. But it's really a document that describes their vision, what they are doing. Uh, MLM systems don't really need white paper. They have events. They have, I mean, they, they are the direct sales. Someone will accept it, someone will not, but that's my opinion on this. Uh, now, uh, OneCoin did make white paper. I haven't seen it, uh, but uh, it was made for this uh, public coin offering, let's call it ICO. Uh, it was delayed the way I know, um, because when those servers were taken, this data was lost, whatever that means. Uh, and it, it wasn't actually canceled, but it got delayed. There is some platform that they are testing and maybe they will even start start, start this uh, process. And for that, when they are actually selling investment to investors, they need to have white paper. But for, for now, what what is this? This is a this educational project and education brings one coins for free that have a vision behind behind it. So I don't I don't see a white paper how white paper can actually help with that. You as uh, IMAs are supposed to ex explain this vision by talk. That's, that, that's, that's how I see it. Very credible answer. Amazing. I hope it's credible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just straightforward answer. And I agree. And uh, one more question. And I think we're just going to close from here. <clears throat> Okay, there you go. And Goran, Goran, are you there? Five, three, two, one. No answer. Did you unmute him? Yeah, I did. Hello, hello. Hello, Goran. Okay. Hello, hello. I wonder how, how will the company stable the, the euro of 20, 75 euro after this uh, ICO? Uh, and how will they stable it so it's not uh, going uh, down? Well, in my personal view, it is possible that price goes down if everyone just wants to sell. But uh, they can put limits on how many, how many coins per day you can actually put in the sell order. And uh, they can they can limit uh, the duration of the sell order to let's say five five days or something that they expire. So there's no sell selling sell wall sell wall that uh, that is accumulating. And uh, 
deal shaker usability would help pretty much. So that's why I'm saying that uh, this is uh, actually all about people. Uh, in the January 2017, they started the test of the platform, exchange platform. It, it was on X Coin X, and uh, there we could see that we could only put certain coins, number of coins per uh, uh, per day. And uh, if if our order wasn't successful, it was canceled after five days. So it was pretty slow to sell. And Supreme Pet packages had the uh, advantage. Now I, I have no idea how many coins they sell because I didn't know anyone from that. But uh, we need to we need to understand that uh, 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 there was three million people who were selling coins, and there was probably tens of thousands, if maybe even less of people who could buy coins because you needed to log in and buy from your trading account. So only those people who are selling pet education and earning compensation plan money, money and who, who have money on trading account could buy. So we had pretty, pretty low supply, uh, demand, sorry, and pretty high uh, uh, demand, uh, uh, supply. So we would expect that price would go uh, down, but price was fluctuating in decimals. To me, that looks like they have ready uh, tools ready to uh, to preserve price. Of course, many people will not be happy because they cannot sell uh, uh, in instant. It, it will it will not be uh, like open market yet. But who knows if what will happen when, let's say, four million by then? But I don't think so. Three point five million is better uh, number. Uh, if 3.5 million people want to sell to the whole world, we, we don't know. I mean, what if Germany comes with this decision that uh, there is no uh, illegal money laundering or there is a blockchain, coin is not fake? What if, who knows how many millions think that this is scam and they are out, they are waiting? What if they all try to come in? Also, we need to understand that many of the financial experts are predicting recession for the quarter four. Uh, there is this uh, parameter called inverted yield curve that is used to measure uh, this uh, economy and it needs to go low and it is, it is going way, way up. And it, it's predicted that there will, will be a recession. Uh, okay, people now have cryptocurrencies, but people also just go to Google Trends and type buy Bitcoin. You will see the sentiment of Bitcoin. Uh, if if any one of you uh, watched the consensus 2018 in New York, it was uh, sentiment was pretty bad over there. Last year, we had promises, white paper, and prices flourished. This year, we have main nets being launched. We have partnerships. We have something going on, and prices are going down. People have learned that manipulation and speculation is, is very big problem at the current crypto market because it's unregulated. So will people run if recession comes? Let's say maybe it won't, won't come, but some experts say it should come because it, this year ends with eight. And every year that ends with eight, we had recession, right? Um, so what if one coin actually can maintain stable price, it can be used. What if people will run from fiat to one coin? What if, I'm just saying, we need to think about it. Maybe it won't happen, but we need to think about it. So they sure do have limits to maintain price. People won't be happy who, want, who just wants to out for sure. But I think that's a good thing because, uh, uh, actually I'm, I'm sorry about those people because they didn't have a chance to be properly introduced to the vision because former leaders were all about money, about greed. They never explained to people anything. They just wanted, they just said, you can sell, you can sell. We can see even all former leaders going to other projects that just wait <coughs> to go to the exchange to sell, 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 and price goes down. And where's the ability? Where's the point? Why, what, why did you do it? That's my opinion on stability. How will it be? We'll, we'll, actually, we, we, we will need to see. Okay. I, I, I can say I can say one more thing. Their end goal is so there is no limit. But if that's necessary, mm. they will impose it. Uh, I will give you an example of that of such governance. Deal shaker. In first one or two months, 
I think there was like forty thousand merchants. <laughs> they were they were they were they, they just let people work. And what did they what did that bring? Scammers, frauds, uh, fake uh, uh, deals. No, the people just need some leadership. So they 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 put in some uh, some gov central governance, and uh, we see uh, a lot cleaner deal shaker, but slower. So if <laughs> limits are needed on exchange, we'll see cleaner uh, trades, but slower. But then again, if we find uh, again, if we find merchants and, uh, that that put good deals, people that 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 have cash from uh, unbanked. Uh, regions can buy one coins to spend on, on deal shaker and that's something that, that we need to think about and there's something that we don't really know about the institutional investors how do we know that company management don't have actually some shadow investment companies that are actually waiting to participate in that I mean it's just a thought you know so I don't know we'll see I'm pretty confident because I know they know what to do. But then again, I say it's all about our, our, us people. So if we want to use the coins and find merchants, it will be fine. If all we want to sell, there'll be trouble. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, one last question. Um, and <clears throat> this was asked from Algeria, Halim as well. And what he was asking is, when we go to public and the market exchange, how would the deal shaker and the members be able to exchange and what price they are expecting? Would it be 20 points? I think some of them you already answered them. And do you think 20, per, 20 euro 75, which is currently right, will be more or less? Well, we, we see difficulty barometer is almost uh, done. So maybe by the October price, price will go up to like, I don't know, 25. But that's not really important in my opinion because uh, only then we need to see what will happen. Will people want to sell coins for, for whatever price? <laughs> will merchants accept it and let merchants sell? We'll see. But yeah, I expect one more rise of the price. Just uh, based on the on the on the on the on the previous uh, pro progress, you know. I mean, th this barometer is pretty much over. But I I, I don't think there would be two. But what if uh, there were so many good deals on Deal Shaker until October? That's going to be. <laughs> I mean, Deal Shaker could also bring another cycle of difficulty barometer. Uh, the, the right now is the time to work on deal shaker and every single people here should learn how the deal shaker works and be able to educate yourself and as well as uh, be able to sign up as many merchants as you can because you will see the beauty in deal shaker soon honestly uh, nothing costs merchant to to sign on deal shaker uh, so, every merchant can put something that he can afford to give considering that they cannot sell the coins right now yeah. and uh, you there... will be able to receive consistent income yeah and or yes. merchants will be satisfied the way it's be made yeah and uh, and of course uh, there is a resource there is a resource center in deal shaker where there are many tutorials on how to make deals and everything um, so it's easy for people to to learn there how to use it Ahmed seems to lose lose his internet uh, yes i think I probably ahmed uh, maybe have a problem with connection but uh, the, thank you very much, Igor, for this great information. And we really learned a lot of stuff today. And I hope everyone else that can learn a lot of stuff. And honestly, I'm really surprised. Like people, they see in this great opportunity and they're still thinking about changing the coin in the fiat currency. And they see there's a lot of problem with the fiat currency. But the thing is, in one coin, we have the usability and we have uh 
and the coins and we have the education so look if people want to trade if people want to trade between cryptocurrencies and fiat they can just read the education they paid here and they can go to any cryptocurrency or even stock exchange uh, it's easier for cryptocurrency because it's unregulated anyone can do it and they can trade and they can earn money or lose money over there uh, one coin is not about trade one coin is about usability that's why i am here all this time just just because of that if they were just trying to go onto the public exchange and list on the coin market cap they wouldn't be any 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 better any different on on 1500 1, cryptocurrencies they are really unique we we've, we've seen tonight why that they are still to prove many things to deliver many things so it's not a done deal it's not a finished project but i think that people who actually understood it and uh, and if all this uh, rolls out uh, i think people who are early early uh, part of this will feel blessed really uh, as for negativity <clears throat> well I've written, I've written on my forum about it. I mean, I can talk about it uh, with anyone with any question. They do have, they do have valid, valid points. Company didn't exactly do everything right, and they acknowledge it and they are trying to fix it. And we can see it with all this GLG new generation because they are taking over the network. They are starting to communicate with network and they're starting to uh, educate network about compliances. On GLG workshop, where they could see how thin line is when you work in a MLM company, how thin line is uh, that you work as a legit MLM and illegal pyramid. I mean, you can work for, for a legal MLM company and still work like an illegal pyramid. It's a thin line, but people just need to educate on that. And I see them doing that, really. And I also am sad to see them doing under, under, under huge pressure over there in Sofia. They are really, really slandered and dragged on the yellow, yellow press. But then again, okay, you, you, you're doing a great vision, so it's needed to survive. <coughs> no, completely, 100%, I do agree with you, Igor. And the people who want to know about usability, they should come tomorrow to the webinar, because as we're doing a deal shake webinar tomorrow at the same time, and they will learn about the usability and they will learn the vision and they will see the vision about the deal shaker tomorrow, definitely. Yes, yes, I, I hope they will. Yeah. And now uh, back to- Yeah, everyone. Yeah, as you can see the flyer for tomorrow, tomorrow we'll be expecting uh, very great answers. Everyone can see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's going to be as well, and a lot of people are expecting this answers. And thank you very, very, very much for all answers. This will make people wake up now and uh, see the truth of the company. And the people who have questions, they can always ask and, and debate one coin. And you're there to support them. Yes. Uh, but the yes. Anyone can come yeah. to my to my forum and ask a question. I mean, uh, I did ban several people who actually I, I tried to let them be critics and uh, and but no, they, they they are not interested in the truth. They are too 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 diggy and nitpicky. And but uh, any real critic is really really welcome over there. Uh, and also there are many people who are actually answering over there. Well, not that many, but. There are several people. I wish there they were much more. I think there are two more hands over there. This Stephen Dilly is trying to raise a hand for long. Yes. And Peter Walsh. Can you? Dilly? Uh, can you unlace Peter? Which one? Oh, Peter. Okay, that's fine. Peter, Stephen. Uh, okay. You, you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Hello. I can hear you. Yes, yes. Sir. So we can. Uh, could you tell me, is uh, one coin going to use master nodes in the future? Uh, I don't know. I don't know really. I mean, what is a master node? You know, it's a part of proof of stake system. Yeah. Uh, they are, I mean, maybe I said that they are they are actually uh, in, interested into future, not locked into whatever they have now. 
So if they decide to go with a technology that uses master nodes, then yes, they will have master nodes. Uh, if they will distribute master nodes, I'm not sure about that because that, that, that would make their, their life harder to help everyone over the network to, to govern the system. But I personally would like to see some distributed nodes like Ripple does. And if they are using some technology that is actually good over there, they can do it. Why not? For example, if you are a bank and you want to open a branch in my country, you need to put your servers into my country. So maybe if cryptocurrency will uh, want to be legally accepted at merchants, maybe they will demand one node also on their on the, on their side. You know, but then again, the company will run all the nodes uh, to 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 sustain the scalability. You know. So definitely, I think that it's viable that they will will have something like that. Yeah, I've been told it's going to be like the next generation of cryptocurrency. Uh, uh, I'm not sure who told you what. Uh, uh, things about it because it, it runs in conjunction with the blockchain, doesn't it? You know, and what's hard for the miners to get. Master nodes. Nodes can work quicker and better, can't they, or something? Are you, you're talking about master nodes? Yeah. Oh, no, no. That's not a revolution that, that already exists. I mean, there are several websites with master node lists. Uh, the most popular is Dash. Uh, yeah, no, that's brought yeah, it out, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those who had thousands of Dash a few years ago, they are earning pretty nice money from that. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are many master nodes, and I've seen some, uh, even some <laughs> MLM schemes about master nodes. Uh, but it's a, it's a risky business. I mean, you need to examine what what company is doing. Is is their token going to have any value? On what exchange did they list? What's the concept? I mean, I've showed you what makes a value of cryptocurrency stable long term, not short term. Short term is crap. I mean, you can take your coins to, let's say, there are master nodes that uh, demand like $50,000 for uh, enough tokens to host a master node. And uh, ROI is like, I don't know, 1,000%. But how do you know that that coin will not be dumped three months after you purchase uh, and start master node? And you need to stake your coins. You know, Some master nodes are even locked, you know. It's not. It's not that that good. I mean, the, the, there is money to be made, made, but those ROE, uh, ROI uh, numbers that you can see, they are tricky. I mean, I don't know. That sounds like a Ponzi. <laughs> it almost looks like a Ponzi because someone is promising you, you know, return, but uh, people lost money over there. I mean, okay, they are all referring to Dash, you know, but Dash is one. So I don't know. But but yes, master nodes are pretty good. But but, but that's all the the part of uh, of uh, proof of stake system. You know, uh, there are there are some uh, projects that will have delegates. Uh, some projects will have obelisks like master nodes. There are projects that will have witnesses. So delegates will will uh, uh, let's say master nodes will be uh, like a gateway from the internet into network, and they will store the blockchain data. And then there are delegates. Who are, who are actually voting on the master nodes. They are looking out that master nodes are not doing uh, bad transactions. And there are witnesses who are voting for, for delegates. And you can host each of those nodes uh, for a certain amount of tokens. They are, I mean, that's proof of stake. That's coming. That's coming, really. And actually, Dash is proof of stake plus proof of work. So you can mine and you can stake a master node. You know, it's a hybrid. Uh, an educated guess from you. What uh, the barometer is at ninety-eight percent now. What do you think one coin will go up to next? I won't take it up where, as word like, but what's your educated guess? I I said it a few minutes ago. I think it's around twenty-five. Yeah, because won't there be another one before October or not after this one? I don't think. I personally don't think so. But if Deal Shaker starts getting more deals with this new system of approvals, and maybe even with better better search engine, and if network would find many merchants, then I don't see why why it wouldn't happen until October. I mean, we we do have like how much how many three months 
It's yeah. 2075, is it now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, next question, Peter. And then this is with the last question, I guess. I mean, it shouldn't be. Anyone questions about, please go to debate and you get all your answers. Every single question you ask me in there. Yeah, can okay. you hear me? Oh. Yes, uh, Peter. My question relates to the, the one coin at the moment on the deal shaker is basically one coin and also, you know, paying other fiat currency. Would that be implemented like Karloff cars, 100% one coin when we go to the X coin kind of thing? When we go like permanently into one coin and on the deal shaker, will that be 100% one coins for all businesses or not? If we're getting away from fiat currency. Well, look, uh, every merchant decides how many, uh, how can, how does he want to split his cost? If merchant wants to uh, sell something for 100% one coins, he will do it, right? Uh, and when I talked about exchange and money, uh, I can also I could go uh, uh, and and find the merchant that will sell something for me 100% one coins. I'm satisfied because I got a new car for 5,000 uh, one coins. And by the time that it happens, what if, let's say, price goes up 5%, that merchant actually made more profit than, uh, than he would uh, uh, make uh, by, when, by receiving cash, you know, and they will be able to, to sell. Now, this is a tricky question with this, uh, you know, there's so, so huge supply and we are really in the dark about this demand, who will buy, who will buy, I mean, who knows, it's the whole world, who knows what, what's going to happen in financial mar markets when they really start this licensed exchange and, and everything. I don't know. Uh, again, I think more than 20 million people know about OneCoin, but they are scared. They read on Wikipedia that it's a Ponzi scheme or something, you know. But what if all those people realize, oh my God, it's not a scam and start to buy it? I mean, we need to open, open, open up for, for anything, you know. And if there is no demand, of course, price will fall. But then again, is it a bad thing? No. If price, if, if price falls, it fell. And maybe buyers will, will buy for at a lower price. And then we start. It's maybe bad for merchants right now, but it's a possibility also. Price can fall. But it's not the end. I mean, look at Bitcoin. But I agree. Yeah. But what I am sure that there will be no huge volatility. Maybe it will fall, but it, it will maybe maybe it will go even back even you know, even bigger when when there is liquidity. You know, liquidity is the key. This is what uh, they made in community when we the company has developed community. As you said in the beginning, that the one coin decided to do a network in terms of building the people, where all the cryptocurrencies they don't have people it's just by supply and demand i mean the amount of people are in there that's it and it can be flatteries they can set up and just drop one time all the way to zero but with one coin is a stable it and i'm really really happy i mean uh, very very happy with what we are doing at this moment time and i was 100 percent sure what i was doing before i joined in and i did a lot of investigations before i joined in not even on just particularly, uh, or this person is there, or that, this, facts. That's what I did. Everyone needs to do that. And for a lot of people, they join because of people's conversation. And I didn't listen to people's conversation. I listened to my own instincts and my own decisions. And that's it. So, yeah, so I met a couple of times with Ruja. She answered, and I was satisfied with her questions. And thank you. That's the only thing I can say. So the people who are selling their coins, they have bad luck. The people who are keeping their coins, I tell them, thank you. I mean, it's something good that you're doing. And you need to aim at the highest coins as possible. So that's it. Igor, thank you very much. OK, no problem. And hope to see you on the next call on uh, in Russia. And most people will be there. And tomorrow we also have a webinar for Deal Shaker. Great news is going to be there. 
And I don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to be something really good. And see you all there. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much. And all that. Thank you, Igor. Yeah. Bye bye.